Welcome to Laval in northern France for the European qualifier for the 2024 Paris Olympics. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Shauna Coxie in the commentary box. Now, Shauna, look, everyone should know who you are, but for people who don't, give us a lowdown uh, because you are an ex-athlete and becoming an expert commentator. Yeah, thank you very much for having me back. It is a privilege to be here in Laval at this event. It's tents in the arena with that Olympic ticket on the line. I've been in this position myself, qualified for the Olympic Games for sport climbing's first appearance in Tokyo 2020. So yeah, it's very surreal being on the other side of the mat still, but I love my competition climbing career and I'm very happy to be focusing on rock climbing and my baby girl now. Brilliant. Well, Sean, it's great to have you. And I know you've been trying out the semi-finals boulder last night. So we'll talk about that when we get into the action because you have literal first-hand experience of it. <laughs> but right now we are looking at our top 20 athletes to make it through to this stage. Last couple of days has been qualifying. Today it's the semi-finals in the morning where we look to get those 20 down to just eight. And then this uh, tomorrow, Sunday, we have the finals for the men and women. But we're kicking off with the women's boulder round. And Sean, of course, this is a combined competition here. So the rules are a little bit different from a normal IFSC World Cup. They are. So people who have seen bouldering competitions before, you will notice that this wall looks a little different. There's some 5, 10s and 25s on the wall. So the principle is still the same. You have a limited amount of time to get to the top. You need to go from the bottom to the top to get a successful attempt. But it's more about collecting points along the way now, which is changing the game a little bit. Absolutely is. Two zones now and the top final hold all indicated on your screen and we'll go through that. And that is our boulder wall, 18 meters long, five meters high. And it's not the most overhanging wall I've ever seen. Usually there's a big overhang feature, but this is sort of gradually overhanging in sections. It is, and I like this wall, actually. It's quite steep on the left with volumes added. You can see how they make it a lot steeper and makes it feel a lot steeper. It says 20 here. It definitely feels a lot steeper than 20 climbing on it. Um, and then, yeah, gradually coming across to the slab. I call it a slab. It says zero. So it, with the holds on, it creates a slab style of climbing, but it is a vertical wall. Well, that is what the athletes have coming up. And we're a couple of minutes away from starting just before 9 a.m. Central European time. And hopefully you're joining us on this Saturday morning. If you've just woken up and you're in bed, grab yourself a coffee because you have an entire day of IFSC action with myself and Shauna Coxie. And a busy day. And a, that. It really <laughs> is, isn't it? Both of us looked at the schedule and we sort of took a deep breath this morning because it's boulder rounds, then lead rounds later on, men and women today for the semi-finals. So we have a feast of action for you tonight. And of course, Shauna, we've had a few of these events coming up. We had the speed qualifier in Rome, uh, where we gave away a speed Olympic place. And of course, the Pan Ams. Uh, was it last week now? I think it was last I, week. Yeah, not, not so long ago. And to explain that a little bit, we had our first Olympic qualification, which took place in Bern. So there's a pathway, there's multiple opportunities to qualify for these athletes. Then what's happening right now is the Continentals. So we've just had Pan Ams, like you said. We've had the speed portion of the European in Rome recently. This is the Boulder and Lead qualification for Europe. And then we'll also have Asia, Africa, Oceania, and... Then we're done. Yep, that's it for this year. Just so, yeah, no, me too. I'm running <laughs> through it in year, my head. But this that's not over, though. We've still got OQS next year, the Olympic Qualifier Series. So there are more opportunities. Exactly. But those places are slowly starting to be taken. And remember, each nation can only have two athletes, so two men or two women, fulfill their slot. So for some teams, it, this is a very pressurized comp. It really is. And a few people have asked me, is this an important event? Is it really important that they qualify at this event and I think the answer is yes because the sooner you qualify the more preparation you can do for the next season going into the Olympics and also it might be their last chance if their teammates have taken up some spots. Exactly well there's a big task ahead of them we'll be talking through all the options as we go but right now Ayala Karem from Israel is out on the mats and just a shout out to the Israeli team who have traveled here under obvious difficult circumstances and our hearts go out to everyone affected by that situation but Right now, Ayala will be out there trying to do the best she can possibly do. Qualifying in last position, so she's climbing first. And this is Boulder 1. And Shauna, it's a good time to talk about you climbing these things because you were here till late last night. I watched you warm up and then you <laughs> went and had a go. So tell me about Boulder 1, what kind of style, how does it feel? It is an intense boulder. It's quite a feisty start to the round. It's not forgiving in the sense that you have to just really get involved. Um, 
You'll see here she's in a very tension position. Ayala is good at these moves. She needs to get very feisty on this next part. Um, you ideally want to step through onto the top of that low volume. Uh, it's slippery on the top, but you can get quite a lot of pounce off it. And then the idea is that you go right hand to the red hold on the red volume, left hand out to the yellow turn. So it's a one, two, pow, pow. There we go. So the pow, pow is what they have to do <laughs> early in the morning here. And Ayala will have her second go. The athletes get minus 0.1 for every unsuccessful attempt. And we will we'll explain this scoring system because it does differ from the normal World Cups. And it's the same scoring system we'll be using in the Olympics in Paris in 24. And Ayala wraps that left hand around the first zone. That's the five points. You can see there's a circle with a five, a yellow line, and Ayala slips off that right hand, sliding down the dual tax. And I found out the story behind that chalk bag she's using here. She, <laughs> Ayala won that when she was 17 in her first pro-style competition. She's worn it ever since. It's a bit of a talisman for her. I like that. It's great, isn't it? Let me have a look at it, it makes me smile. Better from Ayala. Much better there. You saw she, when she hit the ground, you could kind of see that bounce straight back up and that kind of suggests she felt like she could do that move. So I think we'll see her definitely try that beta again. So Ayala pulls on, two minutes 45 on the clock. You can keep an eye on that on the bottom right. The athletes must complete the boulder in that time. And look at those eyes from Ayala eyeing up the next hold. Slapping for the 10. Now, Shauna, she touched the 10 there, but she's not going to give him the points for that because... No, she needs to use the hold that has the points on in order to be awarded them. And Ayala's score will be updated. There's a IFSC app you can download for live updates on the scoring, but of course we'll keep you updated on that too. And better from Ayala, but a spectacular roll backwards. Ayala also, interestingly, didn't have the qualification round that we may have expected from her. She's had some good results in 2023, so she's finished fourth in Hachioji and Brixen. She's definitely one that we've become quite familiar seeing in semi-finals, so for her to qualify in 20th was a surprise, but, and very much a nervous wait for her watching the round as it progressed through qualification, because she only knew she'd made it after the last climbers were finished. So I think she'll be very happy to be on the mats, but also so maybe carrying some tension after that long wait. Absolutely, she's the only Israeli athlete of men and women to make it through to this stage, so she's representing right now out there. Hits that second zone better with the left hand, but still going backwards, not quite finding the position. We have a minute 23 coming up on the clock. Now things start off quite easy during a semi-final, just one athlete. By the end of it, or by the middle of it, we'll have three, four climbing at the same time, and then we'll wind things down as we approach the end of this semi-final. And watch that right toe, it's hooking underneath to steady her. Yeah, so she's keeping her hips nice and close to the wall there. She's gonna, see she's jumping and hitting with two hands, but she's not stepping on top of that lower red volume. If she's able to figure that out, it will definitely give her much more of a boost, getting her hips nice and high, and enabling her to hit the next two holds with slightly bent arms. If she can hit them with bent arms, she'll have more control of the swing, because it is a very aggressive swing, because you're traveling very far to the left. And Ayala gave a bit of a shout of disappointment there. She, I think you're right, she's just struggling to figure out the sequence. She's trying the same thing again. And she's getting close, so it's understandable. What you can't tell from here is how bad that red hold is. It looks good, and I myself, trying this, went to that hold thinking it was going to be a good hold, and it was definitely not. Yeah, that red hold underneath the volume there, you can see next to the uh, five zone hold. That's the one Sean is talking about. Really close, she hit that red hole much better. It's actually slightly turned, almost slightly undercut. So it's not a positive jug by any means. It might look like it on the screen, but it definitely isn't. There's dual texture around the edge, but the textured part is, is kind of turned slightly undercut, so slightly underneath. All right, well, Erin McNeese is on part of Team GB. And of course, Sean Coxie next to me is part, or was part of Team GB. <laughs> so an athlete, you were... Uh, know a bit about and it's it's great to see her on this stage she's been coming all year getting better and better results and she's, she's in contention here 
Yeah, it's cool to see her really fighting out on the wall. Um, she definitely did some big tries during the qualification round, which was great to see. And I saw her training in Sheffield recently, uh, said that she's using this compass experience and just looking to kind of get out there on the mats and, and have a good time. Yeah, she's been doing well on the youth circuit, 16th in Seoul during the Youth World Championships. So she's one of those kind of splitting her time between the youth scene and the senior circuit, making that transition, which we've talked about before, is always a tough one to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's 19 years old and it's just so cool to see GB really kind of finding some flow with the competitions and trying hard. You know, we've got Jack and Toby in the men's semi-final here as well. So yeah, really strong scenes. And that is our crowd. They've been filtering in this morning. It's an early start compared to some competitions, so we'll allow them a little bit of a, a bit of lateness, but they're starting to come into the stadium now. And it is a lovely stadium here. Very, very new, very shiny, huge lead wall, permanent climbing as well, fixed, and then this boulder wall built for this occasion. Uh, and Erin goes once again up towards the first zone. That'll be points on the board for her, of course. You can see when she's in that poised position, ready to jump, but there's no opposition. So both of her hands are pointing in the same direction. That's why they've had, the athletes have had the toe hook underneath the lower volume, just to steady themselves a little bit. It's a very precarious position to move any body part, let alone then try and do a one-two dyno. So coming out from isolation and this being the first boulder, I think is it's a bit of a shock to the system. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. The athletes do get a chance to warm up. There's a big isolation area in the back, a, a really nice one, actually. I did see it empty, to be fair. It's obviously different with uh, with lots of athletes in it, but <laughs> yeah. you warmed up on that one. Kilter board and a, and a good spray wall, so the athletes are ready for this. Definitely, yeah. It's a really great ISO. It's a great event. Hats off to the organisers. It's been very, very smooth so far from everybody I've spoken to. Everyone seems very relaxed, which is unusual for an event like this. And when I mean everybody, I mean the, the organisers, the route setters, the whole team. Um, so yeah, really great work from them, and the isolation zone is, is incredible. The times have changed since I was an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> no filter boards back in my day, that's for sure. It's the moment you left, Shauna, they upgraded. <laughs> they thought, now's the time, let's do it. Well, that's behind the scenes. You guys can't see that. We don't allow cameras in there. We just get to see the athletes on the mats. But luckily, one of the great things with having Shauna is here is she can tell us firsthand what it's like. I did post a picture of the isolation zone, and I thought, am I allowed to do this? As, and they said as long as I didn't post pictures of the boulders ahead of the round, I was good. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the setters last night were working till late. They had to strip all of the qualification routes, put these semi-final routes up. So, busy night for them as well. It's a hard job for the route setters. They work tirelessly close from Erin there. Yeah. She, you saw her hand hit that yellow. That's where the ten is. Again, she, she really needs to try and get some height so she can control that swing with, with her arms and not just be on her fingers when she hits those holds. Yeah, it's a tough start for the women here. I mean, we're only two women into this, but both of them struggling on this ten zone move. And no one really looking like they're getting close yet. Erin was closer, but just couldn't, didn't see if she could control that swing. And that can often be the way. It can, it can look like it's not going to be possible. The athletes climb in reverse order in this round. So Erin qualified in 19th position, um, Ayala in 20th. And then we'll move through the round to the climbers who had a higher point scoring round as we come on. Yeah, Oriane Berton from France got into the top spot, and she's definitely one of the favourites for this competition. But I mean, I'm looking at the top five in front of me. We've got Oriane Berton, Laura Rogera, Stasha Geo, you know, Zilia Avazu, Helen Jenny Corsa, big names, and uh, really it's wide open. It is, and we had Oriane, Laura, and Stasha all top all four boulders in qualification. So they were the only three athletes to do that, which is really cool to have kind of. Three athletes doing all boulders, I think, is really cool. So I can't wait to see those athletes and others because I think there were some surprises from athletes in this round, in the qualification round. Absolutely. Well, Erin is getting closer and closer. She slid down the red hole that time. And remember, skin is a factor for these athletes. They won't be considering it right now. Erin slapping left, but not making it stick. And Shauna, one of the good things about this system is, and we're seeing Erin pull on with 15 seconds to go, they have to keep climbing because that second zone could be very important to the score. Definitely, it's a huge difference. The 10 points, when you add the two disciplines together, every point really matters. And if you don't have the boulder round that you want, it almost 
put, adds more pressure onto the lead. Of course, there is a lot of pressure on you want to have the best performance, but suddenly it kind of changes how that looks, I think, for the athletes. Yeah, I completely agree with you. All right, Mattia Pozzi runs on from Austria. Her teammate, Jessie Piltz, picked up a the Olympic ticket in Bern. So we were talking about teams slowly running out of places. Team Austria is certainly like that with Jakob Schubert as well. He picked up a ticket the other day. And we can see Mattia climbing up boulder one and then Ayala runs on for boulder number two. And boulder number two, Sean, it was one that you thought was particularly tricky out there. Yeah, I would say this is the hardest boulder of the round. Um, it's was tweaked quite a lot by the setters um, to try and get it perfect. The start has been made a little bit more difficult, but also the setters spend so much time trying to make sure that it's not going to be harder for certain like certain sizes and easier for different people. So they definitely make want to make it as fair as possible. Um, but this move here to the five, I thought was insanely difficult. It's there's. N not a lot at all on that right hand that she's holding now on the blue. So the intended method is to flick now into the five with the left hand um, to open the hips out, really sit into the foot and a big flick move. But I have not yet seen anyone do it or understand how it's supposed to be done. So I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. And my, the, the way I found to work for me, I would switch my hands on the undercut and then reach left hand over to the blue, get a foot lock in, match my hands, and then go to the five. But uh, it didn't feel very easy or pleasant, I would say. Yeah. They've now put a, a hold behind the blue that's under the black to stop your foot going too far, because I was very scared my foot was going to get stuck. But that can't happen now, I've been told. Okay, well, that's what she has in front of her. Ayala will pull on off your screen once more. But with Mattia there, as we get both athletes. And underneath where Ayala's left hand is, there is a very good grey hold. But it just gets you into that position you were talking about with your foot underneath. It's, it's awkward, but she came closer. It is. She got really close then, and that's definitely the way I think will work for her. It's a really intense and quick movement that she needs to do, but the body position has to be perfect to make it work. Well, if you've just woken up, switched on your TV, hello and welcome to Laval in northern France. About an hour from Paris, and we're here for the European round of the Olympic qualifier. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Shauna Coxey, and we are watching the women's boulder action this morning. And once more, we see an overlay of our wall. 20 degrees on the left, zero on the right, 10 in the middle. So not the steepest wall we've had on the circuit, but certainly so far challenging for the athletes. And Mattia, look at those eyes. It says a lot there. Yeah, Matthias had some good performances this year, coming 12th in, um, in previous years, sorry, coming 12th in Munich in 2019. And she's 23 years old, and I think someone we're, again, getting more used to seeing in more rounds of the competition. Again, she didn't look like she was having the best round in qualification, but she seems to have walked out here with a really kind of focused look on her face. And I do think this is a hard boulder to be confronted with coming out of ISO and into this, this day, which is a very long day for these women. Exactly. I've had three coffees just to be able to speak on here. <laughs> so <laughs> God knows what they've been doing. Intravenous coffee back there in the ISO. But, but I think this is also Matias' first ever boulder and lead event. So yeah, a big important event for her to kind of be gaining that experience for sure. And we talked about how important this competition is for everyone because it's worth remembering that points are available for this as well. And with that OQS uh, round next year, for some of them who are on the edge of getting into that, this is a big competition, so a lot to play for. And Ayala has a right hand this time underneath. Now she matches. And that blue hold looks good in your screen, but so slopey and hard to hold. Really, really difficult. It's it's harder than I imagined. And I know that sounds maybe strange, but I know that hold. And out there, it feels like it's got almost worse texture. I don't know if it's the light, if it's the fact that it's quite warm in here. But I hit the hold thinking, OK, this, I get this move, I understand what to do. And I just couldn't fathom it. The movement going left hand to the five, just because I could not get anything out of the blue hole below the five. Um, but I think there are different ways to work around it. I think we will see athletes trying to do some trickery. And yeah, of course, some of the athletes will be super strong and be able to pull through. Um, Ayala tends to do a lot better on the more slab and vert climbs. This is 
it's, yeah, I mean, I'm almost questioning whether it is 20 degrees on there because it feels so much <laughs> steeper. So this is an, um, it feels overhanging and Ayala has a 38% um, success rate on overhangs, I've been told. So yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see how she fares on the later boulders. Uh, Ayala's second boulder is done. She leaves the mats, two to go for her. But of course, our rotation continues. Georgia Tessio is out next. We had a great round yesterday, especially in the lead. So good to see her on form. She joins Erin on the mats. Erin will be on boulder two. And there is Georgia on boulder number one from Team Italy. Erin has a long look at the start of this boulder. And you can see on your right the rest of the boulders. We still haven't seen the red one or the slab purple down at the end. That's coming in a couple of minutes. And Erin just decided to take off her chalk bag. Doesn't need it for that first round. Sometimes the athletes will carry it up. Often, yeah, carrying it out to kind of have it on and then decide whether they want to wear it or not. Usually people or athletes take them off when they think it's going to be dynamic. So it's interesting that Erin's opted to take it off here. Or she's looked at the boulder, seen how bad the holds are and thought, I'm not going to be chalking up on this one. <laughs> well, let's see how she does. Her first go through stretches slowly up with the right hand towards the bottom of that hold where it's narrowest. Oh, goes up with the right hand. Yeah, interestingly, we saw Ayala try the exact same thing, and it's exactly what I did as well, because you hit that blue and you just think, there's no way I'm holding this, it's so bad, surely this isn't the intended pizza, and you, you just want to do something. The left hand to the undercut that she's holding underneath that black is so good, you just don't want to let go of it. Yeah, it's a monster. You can't quite see it on your screen, but it's underneath the black where the brush is, just there on your screen. That's where that hidden hold is. And Georgia is having a look at her climb here. Good starting holds, a big foot, but from there, things get really awkward. You need that toe in underneath. And you can see all the iPads down at the front. That's mm -hmm. not part of some kind of extra streaming. That's for coaches so they can, well, A, look at things for appeals, but also just analyze the performance of their athletes. It's interesting to see how the coaching pit has changed over the years as well. Everyone coming out with their iPads, with their tripods. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a different game these days. I always knock into them as I try to wander through. Mm -hmm. I feel terrible, so apologies, coaches. All right, well, we've got just coming up to three minutes on the clock in this round. The athletes do have access to that clock wherever they look. There's one on the top, this clock's on the side, so it's easy for them to see. And Erin into this squat position, reaches up to the sloper, which is pretty good, especially with that toe in. There's the undercling she hits with the left hand, but it's this move that she's struggling with now. Shauna, presumably easier at the bottom where it's just a, a little bit narrower. But yeah, so the the bottom of the hold is a little bit uh, slightly slightly better, but again, it's really not very good. We got a good look at it just then on the screen, and Georgia just really fighting on that that cross move there. It's like she's not quite seen the one two maybe, or doesn't feel like she's able to gain the height. We've seen her have some good results in previous competitions, taking seventh in the Salt Lake World Cup in 2022, um, but. This season, maybe not doing as well as she would have wanted, so great to see her in this round. But again, coming out to that first boulder is, is a hard place to be. Yeah, it really is. Tough start for the women, which gives us time just to build into our competition here. And this is, uh, of course, you're watching this either on YouTube or Discovery, Eurosport, whatever platform you're on. There will be lots of broadcasts throughout the next couple of days, so do set a reminder. Now let's watch this as Georgia launches for that right hand. She's not getting very much power out of her legs there. See, she's not gaining much height as she reaches over the top. I do think we will see some athletes go just right hand over, so holding that five, crossing into the red and sticking that position without flicking out to the yellow, but it will be harder. All right, so into the underclings for Erin. Missing that jib. Do you think she's not aiming for that jib? She wants to hit the sloper and then match it, or do you need that jib? Yeah, so the jib is the, the little like extra addition onto the hold, so the little bit that's screwed on. Um, screw on jibs, people call them different things. That is designed for the thumb, so when you're hitting it left hand. I think, like you said, Erin is aiming for the slope, and then she'll come in to match. But also, if she holds that five and moves her feet and just holds it, she gets those five points. So, I don't know, maybe she's looking for the five points as well. Yeah. Or she's just looking for any method that will help because it's really difficult, that section. Yeah, time is ticking, just 35 seconds. Georgia there fell again. 
But she's got the five points. She's got points on the board. Georgia was closer on that attempt. She definitely gained some momentum towards the 10. I think we'll see her given one more feisty go before the time is up. So 16 seconds coming closer. Feistier, but not quite. And Erin reaching a lot higher into the middle of the blue there. I spent a lot of time bumping up and up and up that blue, trying to find something that there really isn't much there. <laughs> All right, well, the round comes to an end. What a savage start for the women this morning. No top so far, only a couple of zones. The scoreboard will come up a little li later on. Of course, we've got 20 athletes to get through, so if we show you that all the time. But remember that app you can download. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Magic Georgia <laughs> in the lead at the moment, but only due to count back. Very similar scores early on here. And often the way with a bold around in the early start. And I think we'll see those scores change throughout the next two boulders because every attempt that they take, they will be marked down 0.1. So if they fall off going to the five, but get it the next go, it'll be 4.9. And the next two boulders getting to the five is less simple than the first boulder. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Well, for the first time we get to see women's three, Ayala is on. Big, powerful move up to a press that she hits the first time. And on the left from uh, Spain, Izia starts her journey in Laval with, as we're used to, a launch over to the right but fell on her first attempt. And Matia is on women's number two. And Ayala has the zone on the slab. That's an interesting slab. It's quite a dynamic movement in the middle there. Yeah, so it is slightly overhanging, that wall. Kind of a little bit like a slab with the volumes added for the feet, but it, it doesn't feel like it. Um, it's a very fast movement. Maybe not the hardest coordination, but it is coming into kind of a tricky finish as well. Great start from her to stick that five on her first attempt, really strong effort. And I think you can see her on the mat at the minute. She was dancing around just off camera there, um, just trying to figure out that movement. Yeah, well, you said she was good at slab, so she's able to reset after those first two that didn't quite seem to suit her. And maybe this will be more to her liking. Yeah, those cheetah holds laid sideways on the wall. And we do have a feature coming up at some point about the holds and the various different brands we use. So do keep an eye on all the IFSC's social media channels and YouTube, of course. Subscribe to everything, otherwise you might miss something. And Izia is our youngest athlete on the mats right now. She's 18 years old. And her best performance at a World Cup has been 25th in Innsbruck this year. So great to see her in this round. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about her as one to kind of watch for the future. She's been a bit underground, but has burst through into the Spanish scene. So keep an eye on her. Yeah, and she's finished second in the European Cup this year, so definitely one to watch. You know, she's definitely had some good performances. Again, struggling with this, this move that we know is really, really tricky, but hopefully is able to keep that focus and keep trying and figuring out different ways and trying different things. You can see her moving her feet around a little bit just then, just trying to do something different. It's really kind of showing maturity in her climbing actually as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Shauna. And maturity is the right word because, you know, sometimes we see young athletes just launching again and again and again and not taking a moment to pause. And it's something you learn, I think, as you progress. Definitely, it's really important to reflect on each attempt to use that attempt as information to try and adjust what you do on that next go. Uh, well, three women in action. We still haven't seen the slab. That will be uh, either next or the round after this. So we're starting to get busy here in the semi-finals. Ayala making that first move looks so simple now as she stands up. But this is this coordination move. You saw her hands move very quick, but her feet get left behind. If she wants to stick that hold, she's going to need to move her feet a lot faster too. You can see there's a red volume, the furthest right one. That's where her foot wants to land in order to make that hold she's going towards feel much better. Because it isn't a jug, it's sloping and rounded. Um, it'll feel like a jug if her feet manage to make it across to the final red foot hold volume. All right, let's see if she can do that. That's the final volume on the far right mm -hmm. Sean was talking about. And again, her hands moved across to where she wanted to be, but she left her feet behind, which means when her hands get there, her hips are still to the left, which is going to mean she's spinning off. There's no opposition with her foot. She doesn't need to hit the foot necessarily, but if she doesn't move her hips, she won't be able to hold on to it. 
All People right, well, will get used to me talking about hips. <laughs> I was about to say, have you had lots of sort of coaching requests since the World Championships? I have, actually, yeah. I bet, because I've, I've been receiving messages saying, how can I get Shauna to teach me this stuff? And I was like, you have to message her, lots not me. Lots of YouTube video requests, so they'll be coming in the future, I promise. But um, yeah, climbing is all about your hips. Where your hips go, you will go. So if you want to go up the wall, make your hips go up. If you want to go to the right, the hips need to go to the right. There we go. Shortest trademark movement tips here. But Ayala, her hips didn't follow her that time. She comes down 16 seconds is not gonna, really going to be enough time, but she's still looking at it. The rest of the women are going. Ayala pulls back last time for this. Hits the five. Seven seconds to go. Can she get a second zone? She can't this time. You can see that frustration in her body as she's just there knowing that that move is possible for her. And it's so interesting. We talk all the time about grades in competition, right? And it's impossible to grade these boulders, but especially because you get those five minutes, you're on the match, you're in front of the crowd, you've done all this preparation for this event, and suddenly you've only got those five minutes to make it work, and then it's gone forever. They never get to try these boulders again. <laughs> it's brutal, isn't it? Well, we have another athlete on, Sara Joppa from Slovenia, and she's another one to watch. Very, very young, just 18, and she's certainly been in the play. She won the youth championship in Helsinki recently, and she's starting to make inroads into the senior circuit. So part of this Slovenian team, and look, this is a good time to mention Janja Garnbrett while we're talking about <laughs> Slovenia. And just to explain to people, we don't have a full list of athletes here, and that's partly because this is a European qualifier. So obviously anyone outside of Europe can't compete here. And some athletes have already got their Olympic place. So people like Janja Garnbrett, as I mentioned, Jesse, Jakob, for example, lots of other athletes. They won't be competing here. There's no need. So that's why a few athletes are missing as watching Georgia go up with the right hand, hitting the sloper for the first time we've seen progress. Really great from her. I think she'll be awarded those five points there. So not the sequence that was intended, but an important five points for her, definitely. Yeah, I think that's a good point because you can break the beater to get to a zone. doesn't matter how you get there. As long as mm -hmm. you use it, those points are on the board. Forget the rest of the boulder for the time being. Just log those points. All right, Erin is back on the slab. This big stand-up move. Up she comes, all but drops it with the right hand. She's going one-handed here, which is interesting. There's a yellow jib, so a yellow screw on underneath. So she's just hit that now, and you saw her kind of create that tension as she hit it. Really interesting choice for her to do that movement that way, but worked for her, definitely not wrong. Um, she's going to slowly creep out to that five, which is a terrible hold. There is very little on that. It's just there to help you get those feet across. We won't see athletes kind of pulling on that and crossing through. I don't think it's very much intended that you have to go fast here and do that coordination movement with the hands and the feet. It's a really well set boulder to force that movement. Yeah, and we saw Erin's left hand kind of get left behind that time. She wasn't bringing it in. So not quite getting this coordination sequence. Sarah on the yellow zone. Eyes it up. I love everyone's eyes on this boulder. Yeah, it's a great angle to be able to see what they're looking at. We've not yet seen anyone step on the higher part of that volume, maybe because it is slippery, it doesn't let you um, want to stand there. Uh, when I came out to it, I looked at it and was like, I don't want to stand on that very much. And the set was like, it might be worth it because you, it'll set you up well for what's coming later. So yeah, well, eyes on the slab for um, some slippy holds coming later on. But right now we see Sarah eyeing up again and going with one hand. And I do think we'll see some athletes stick it that way. Definitely harder, but possible to do. Um, like you said, she's part of Team Slovenia. Slovenia have three athletes in this round. France have four, Italy three also, and Germany two. So we have a lot of kind of athletes from teams kind of multiple athletes in this round which is again cool to see yeah i'm glad you mentioned the french team because certainly they've become a real force within climbing in the last couple of years and this french crowd is going to explode later on when we see some of their athletes come we talk about home crowd advantage and you can feel it in the room when the <laughs> french athletes come out the crowd really pumps as they should it's great great to hear and really cool to be part of it is, and that crowd was that shout was for Sarah. We'll flick to her in a sec. There she is. She's got through the high zone, but fell after. That's great points on the board for her. Really, really great points on the board from her. I would be interested to know if she went one hand or two hands. It looked like she was very close with that one hand. Um, I think we'll get to see her try it again as well. But 
interesting that she did drop that move there. The hold she's going to isn't great, but if you're in the right body position, it can definitely feel pretty good if you stay to the right. And then the last move on the first boulder is powerful. Georgia with the left hand, she went up with the right hand to get the zone, but definitely that left hand is needed to progress through. Yeah, for sure, and she opted to miss the blue one out, and like I said, it's very terrible hold, so she matched the undercut and went left hand up to the five, trying to make that work. Well, it's all action here. Sarah is into the zone again. We get to see it. Now, this is the move she dropped last time, which was a bit surprising. It was, and you can get a knee bar in here, so just knee against the hold, which she's done now. Much better from her. For this last move, in order to make it work, you need to be incredibly committed to the sequence. She's opting to get her foot high. That's not the intended beater. She wants her foot back down. She's not going to choose to do that. No, and couldn't get the distance on it, got all caught up underneath herself. Yeah, the foot actually, where she had her foot, made her body unable to move left. She needed the foot low. Um, but regardless, our first look at the top of Boulder 1 from Sarah. So great climbing from her, and I hope she can reset and not be too frustrated that she was that close to the 25, because there's still three boulders for her to go. Exactly. Well, our next athlete is waiting in the wings, and it is Hannah Moyle from Germany. Now, she's had one of those seasons where she hasn't quite hit the heights of previous years. And talking to coaches and to her, you know, it's something that is obviously frustrating for her. But she's someone you can't count out. And I've certainly got her in my list of potential favorites for this competition. Because with Hannah, you know, she has the ability to do it. We, she just needs to put it all together. We've seen some really strong performances from her. Um, in previous years and this year too, coming second in Hachioji this year. And I think it's impossible to call who's going to be taking the top spot at this competition. At this event, it is only the winners who get their Olympic ticket. It's not the podium, it's not finals, it's just that gold medalist. So, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on and I do think it's impossible to call. Yeah, it's crazy when you think that just one athlete really will walk away with the top prize here in Laval. So one of these 20, but yeah, such a savage cut for them. And of course, they will get awarded medals first, second, and third. But as Shauna said, it's that gold medal that gives you the ticket. And that's what everyone is aiming for here over the weekend. All right, Mattia, on this first move, we've seen a couple of ways of doing this. She goes up with two hands towards the jib. Doesn't hit it that time. And immediately pulls on again. Not particularly taxing this move, so she can throw herself at it a few times before she figures it out, and now we see the final slab. And Sean, I said to you, I can't figure out the foot sequence because I never can on slabs. <laughs> but you did pretty well on this when you climbed it, didn't you? So Yeah, interestingly, slabs were not my thing back <laughs> in my competition days. So um, it was a pleasant surprise to find myself at the top of this border. It has been tweaked since then, I think. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully not too much. Um, <laughs> but it's going to be an interesting one to watch because it's definitely going to test the climbers, probably their head more than anything else. Hannah making quick work of this cross. Yeah, it looked like a different boulder then, didn't it? And she gets a knee bar in to go up. Yeah, smart climbing from her, no hesitation on that move. This last move, however, she needs to be very committed. Hips need to go super high and not too far left for her to stick this. Her right foot needs to turn into a toe hook. It does. Hips stay to the right. A great Great performance from her, and well, a huge smile too. Yeah, I think she needed that for confidence as much as anything. She'll leave quickly, have a long rest. And you could see her cheeks puffing out as she tried to psych herself up for that move. Now we're seeing our split screen for the first time, so all the boulders are at the top of your screen. We've got a central shot, right now it's boulder three, and the score on the right, 24.9 with that top is Hannah Moyle, so that's the full 25 minus a 0.1 for her failed attempt. And you can see the yellow bar filled all the way up to also indicate a top. And there is Izia taking a deep breath as she has a look at those cheetah holds. I have struggling to get established on Boulder 4, which is interesting, something I would have imagined her to be much more quick to figure out. Um, but I think if we do see her established position, I think we'll see her move through it relatively easily through this middle section would be what I guess but almost some frustration building now hopefully she's able to calm her nerves take a breath and and figure out this body position on this run I always find a run and jump 
such a tricky prospect because the mats, they're not solid, obviously. So mm. when you're running on that, you're sinking in. It's a bit like running on sand, but not quite as bad. And it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> it is something these athletes are very familiar with, though. <laughs> True. I suppose for people at home, it's like uh, it is difficult running like that, and it's weirdly tiring. So Ayala has a little seat and a rest. Izia, look at that left hand and right hand in. Wow, great work from Izia there. So powerful, really strong. Opting to go up the left hand to the five. Really important points for her. Head in hands as she hits the mat there. A bit frustration. The five on Boulder 2 is incredibly slippery. So the blue hold is bad, the five is slippery, and you're moving up to a relatively good hold, but it's blocked. Um, so she was almost too quick in her movement there, maybe a little, like, flustered. Um, Explain for us, because this starting position, we've seen Ayala try it a few different ways, because the green lines indicate a limb. So currently she's not actually in the the starting position, let alone to, to climb the rest of the boulder. She isn't, but every time both of her feet leave the ground, she's marked down for an attempt. So not, she hasn't hit the starting position yet. You can see her right foot just keeps missing that foothold. I actually did the start of the static. I crimped a screw hole because I'm not a fan of running. I was going to say running jumps. There's no jump involved. It's running stand, I guess. Um, so it is possible, and I do think we'll see other athletes doing that too. Interestingly, she's not tried that. Um, you can see all the probably my chalk on the bottom and bottom, bottom volume there on the right. Um, so it's going to be a, a frustrating moment for her to not get any points at all on that final boulder. Yeah, and Viella, boulder is kind of her speciality. So that is a disappointing start for her. She will get to pick herself up and go for that lead round later on. So it's not all over for her, but not the best of starts. Definitely not. And it's been a long season. Important to remember that these athletes have been competing all year because the events this year have counted towards the Olympic qualification event that will happen next year. So it's been an important season and it's all built up. This is the last event of the season for these athletes. So a grueling season, not worth definitely worth not forgetting absolutely beaches are calling after this <laughs> now Pet <Aren't> I just? <laughs> Petra Klingler is on and she had a very emotional goodbye in the world champs in Bern one of those athletes where this Olympic qualification process might be the last time we see Petra so let's just enjoy every second that we've got left with her on the mats and she's underway on Boulder 1 yeah she's our oldest athlete on the mats out there but she is also a previous world champion she's had some great performances we saw her come out in the qualification absolutely smash the first boulder looked like a walk in the park for, for her. She had a great boulder round. Um, and then also a really strong performance and lead in the qualification here. So yeah, again, one to watch. Yeah, she could do it. I'd love to see it. She's also the ice climbing world champ as well. It's just worth remembering. Petra Klingler down on the left has multiple talents. All right, well, all four boulders in action. Erin is on her last climb. She's currently sitting in sixth place and needs some more points on the board here. Georgia on boulder number three that's sarah on boulder two and as we said petra on boulder one she's off the ground and underway again it's definitely interesting coming out after someone has just topped or especially if they've done it fast and flashed because the athletes will be in an isolation zone behind the wall so they can't speak to other athletes they can't speak to their coaches but they can hear the atmosphere they can hear what's going on it's quite obvious if someone tops you know the crowd get very excited and if they are in the same space the athlete will walk back in with a very big smile on their face and time left on the clock so it's not hard to guess whether someone's done something um, of course you don't know the exact information um, but definitely for Petra right now you know she's just climb, climbing not long after Hannah um, has come back into the isolation zone so be interesting to know whether that's playing in her mind or not or she's just focused she's a very experienced athlete um, so I imagine she's able to to use that information to her advantage and I mean in her how she feels on the wall as opposed to gaining more information Absolutely. well Sean I want to talk to you about the start of women's fall because we've watched Ayala struggle we're watching Erin struggle so when you said you sort of did it a different way mm -hmm. what was the way you did it and why do you think they haven't sort of figured it out yet so I crimped a screw hole, <laughs> which is uh, allowed. You can't use bolt holes. So you can't put your fingers into the, the holes for the bolts of the climbing holes, but you can use screw holes. Um, so on the gray volume, I was crimping that foot on, and they played around with different, they had a plate on originally, which they decided to take off. Um, but I do think it's still, we'll see athletes doing the same way with crimping the screw hole. For me, I'm just not a big fan of, of running starts, and 
I will do anything to avoid <laughs> it. Uh, hence my perch to start of <laughs> a boulder fall. Not, not something we'll see very often, I imagine, because it's much more obvious to do that run. <laughs> yeah, Ayala sort of played around with trying it. Oh, look, we've got a uh, Petra on boulder number one. She's into the second zone. Big move coming up for her, though. Tries to get set, uses the heel for a sec, changes her mind, hits the left hand for Petra. Oh, this is great work from her, but can she figure out this last move? There's a toe hook available. Oh, she hits it and matches. That toe sticks and a big celebration from Petra. Yeah, huge smile from her. She was happy with that. Great to see her. She had the heel in and then as she moved, she turned that to a toe. And um, really smooth climbing. It's a it's a bit of a scary move up there, actually. This wall feels very high. Um, I know that seems like a silly thing to say. It almost doesn't look like it. We saw Erin get established on Boulder 4 there as well. Bit of frustration as she came down, though. She was very close to getting that 10 points. I don't think she quite got it, unfortunately. But the 5 is hers. Good work from Erin. Sara tried the heel on this move before. She sticks with the toe. The heel seemed to just pull her underneath too much. It's hard to move off it. It's really, really hard. It's such an awkward position to be in. These boulders are definitely testing the climbers in very different ways. Erin back up on the slab, though. Really good, quick learning from her. We see her step through, right foot down. She's currently stood on a no texture part of a hold and a no texture jib with her right foot. So not a lot um, to gain from the feet. And just ripping off the wall with the 10 in her hand. But unfortunately, she won't get awarded those points because she was falling as she hit it. We can see the 10 just there, just how tiny it is. Yeah, horrible hole. So Erin won't get the points for that. She leaves, her comp is done. And remember, we're looking for only eight. And we won't be able to tell you the results of this semi-final yet. We have a lead round to come, but we'll certainly be able to get an idea of who's in contention. And another Italian athlete runs on. Camilla Moroni is in action. And Hannah Moyle, after her success on Boulder 1, will do the same thing or try to do the same thing on Boulder 2. Really cool to see three Italians in this round. Definitely a team that's been stepping it up over recent years. Yeah, Laura qualifying in second position for this. She'll be on penultimate athlete. That's to come. And Georgia straight in. She's a powerful climber. She likes moves like this. But struggling a bit, and she pops off with that foot. Has a look down at the hold. Yeah, Camilla is one of the shorter climbers. She's 157 centimeters tall, so shorter than the other athletes that are on the wall right now, which will make that starting position a little bit awkward, but potentially making the top bit easier. Climbing's a funny sport in that there is no ideal perfect height. Um, and sometimes moves are easier if you're taller or harder if you're taller. So yeah, it's just kind of part of the game. Um, you can see here she's quite extended on that part of the uh, part of the boulder, but I do think if she can get into the right position, she's definitely capable of doing this next section. Yeah, boulder one is the only one that we've seen topped so far. Hannah comes up with the left hand, gets the heel, uh, the toe in. And then Izia is about to pull onto the slab. Mattia down at the end. I haven't seen too much of her. She's on the final slab, begins that run and jump. Look at this from Hannah. But she's wrong-handed herself here a little bit and does drop down. She is, but I do think she'll be awarded that five because she was moving her hips around. So really strong effort from her to gain those points. Really smart climbing um, to kind of go up, get the points, and then adjust in what method she thought she needed to do. Yeah, good work from Hannah. Mattia running up on the slab. Got a hand on the starting hold, but couldn't hold it. I haven't actually seen anyone. I missed the time when Erin pulled through. And she's trying it statically on the top right of her screen. Shauna is pointing excitedly. So this is how you did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, they We had a plate on originally, and then they've, they've changed that. So it was easier. Um, but it's definitely still possible now. I have slightly different body position to what Mattia is doing. And they removed the plate in order to try and prevent the static beta, but I definitely think we'll see some athletes opting for that. Um, there is a screw hole on the right that you can use, but it's, yeah, it's pretty tiny. When you say plate, are you talking about no texture no, surface? No, it was a textured plate, so it was just an entirely flat hold, basically. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, similar to the no texture plates, but with texture. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good to hear you talk about it, because it's just 
pointing out again that the setters are continuously thinking and tweaking these boulders. It's not something they put up and forget about it. Oh it's my goodness, I wish we had a camera on the setters for the entire rounds because they care so much and they are so invested. They watch the rounds and then they tweak the boulders depending on what happens in the rounds. They are extremely passionate and invested and they work so tirelessly. They were here till really late last night working on tweaking and getting them just perfect. Um, headsetter here is Garrett Greger. I've known Garrett for many, many years. We were trying to remember how many years, um, way over 10. Uh, he's an experienced setter and he was massively analyzing the qualification rounds, wanting the next rounds to be absolutely perfect. And the whole setting team are just really motivated and psyched. It was a really fun experience to get to be surrounded by such enthusiasm for the sport, <laughs> honestly. It is brilliant. I mean, the whole, you walk in here, it's just like a, a festival of climbing. And this audience as well is well educated here. They understand climbing and they're really getting behind the athletes. And we have all four still on with a minute to go. Launching up again there, all three women at the same time walk forward to take their place. 48 seconds to go. And let's watch Hannah and see if she's figured out this middle sequence. The start of this women's two is really pleasant climbing. And then you kind of get into this middle section. And it, it, for me, it, it felt really awkward. Um, it's going to be testing the climbers in a very different way to what we often see because it's very tension and really precarious, weird positions that they have to be super strong through as well. Yeah, and Hannah there called it. She's got 20 seconds to go, but the athletes don't need to use all the time. She's got five points, didn't think she'll get the 10, so she'll use the extra time for more of a rest. And Izia starts nothing for her right foot. You saw a big slip there. It's just hard to stand on that red volume. Big slip. You saw she tried to weight it um, by pushing straight down. In order to weight that foothold, you need to be pushing into the wall as well because it, there's not a lot to stand on there, that's for sure. Well, we have our rotation. The brusher team is out. They clean up the holds for the athletes, trying to get rid of some chalk and dirt off them. So we have similar conditions for everyone. And running on Chloe Collier from Belgium. And our 10th athlete out, we're halfway through. It's moving quick, isn't it? Well, coming up to almost 10 o'clock Central European time in the morning. And if you've been watching these qualifier rounds, you've had to switch your time from Chile over to Europe. So congratulations if you've been watching all of those events. And now you're joining us here. Hope the jet lag isn't too bad. After this, we do have more continental qualifiers coming up. Jakarta. That will be the Asian qualifier, and then there's one in South Africa, one in Australia for the Oceania and African rounds. All right, let's watch Chloe as she begins her semi-final here. Easily into the first hole, but it's all about this sequence coming up, as in the background we see Sarah stand up on the slab as well. Chloe, oh, I thought she'd saved it. She just kind of lent a little bit too far back, almost saved it. And then, yeah, just popped off. I think we'll see her reset and and get a good good go at this next powerful move. All right, Petra hits the zone. Let's see if she's awarded that. She hasn't been yet. I'm not sure she will. Held it for longer, but didn't really use it. And that's what the judges are looking for. Yeah, as she hit that hold, she was already falling down. Um, so I, I don't think she will be awarded that. If she is, I expect there might be some appeals. The judges um, will make a decision, and then that decision can be appealed by your own team if it's in favor, or a different team if it's against. I guess a different team could appeal in favor, but I don't expect that they would. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> All types of tactics going on. And we will let you know if any appeals come through. It's highlighted on the app now. Well, Chloe with a different foot sequence, had to step through with the right yeah, foot. Yeah, so that is the intended sequence, I believe. Um, it's a sequence that I use, so stepping through onto that slippery section. What you need to do to make that work is go really, really quickly. So you need to hit that slippery section with a lot of force to not slip. If you're going slowly, you're much more likely to slip. Chloe, interestingly, is 26 years old, and I was almost surprised when I saw she was 26, because she's so experienced. Yeah. I assume she was older in some ways, but she's really experienced, and it definitely shows in her climbing and her approach. Um, and you can see there in your top corner of your screen, such quick learning from her on those attempts. Yeah, she's through. We haven't seen many people drop this last move, so Chloe has a chance. And look at Petra as well, left hand, right hand. 
This is powerful stuff from her. Big fighting from both of these athletes right now. Really cool to see. And Chloe almost static into that position. There's so much going on. I don't know Petra where to look. just did an insane save. She climbed so well through that section, getting some really important points. Needs to keep it together now. Stands up, hits the undercut. Needs to build those feet in order to get the match. It is not an easy match, this. She really needs to get some pressure through her right foot if she can. She is fighting so, so hard. That was an incredible effort from Petra. Some fast thinking, really impressive climbing. And I expect she's going to need quite a big rest now because that was very impressive. <laughs> Look at her breathing hard. And Chloe Collier on the top left. She got Boulder one done as well. So double action happening. And Petra so close, but of course she won't be awarded that top. She only had one hand and we're now watching Chloe as she makes her way through the top. Straight into that knee bar just to help her get up into the shallow. A little bit of hesitation on this last move, understandably. it's. It isn't as easy to figure out as maybe some of the other moves have been, but Chloe doing this really strong fight. It's so hard to hit that last hole. Heel in, expects a change to her toe to be able to match it. No, she locks the heel in. Really nice climbing from her. Yeah, thinking outside the box. Good work from Chloe Collier. You can see what it means as that head hits the hole, a deep breath and a big cheer as she hits that ground, because that's 25 points. It is, so she's on the board. Sarah almost got her 25 points, spinning off but two zones awarded for her so great progress and a minute to go so she could reset and look at this footwork from georgia now she that right foot is on a jib so there's a bit of texture there uh, it's on a no texture jib oh it's no texture okay yeah, so sorry. it's a no texture jib on a no texture part of the hold so there's a bit of positivity there and <laughs> um, what happened after my attempt first attempt on this and i think they expect it to be a little bit harder so they move the foothold in closer to the wall to make it much more difficult to kind of get into balance um which definitely definitely did make it harder i still think that we'll see some of the athletes kind of cruising through this section but you've got the nerves you've got this awkward position here and you just have to be super precise which georgia just did right there the 10 does have something on it but it's tiny yeah. and the last move as we're going to see soon you can go with either hand to well she's um, got five seconds to get it done as well need to hit it this time right hand but it wasn't quite enough and i got the feeling that she was slightly rushing obviously with the clock ticking down there you could hear the beeps she could hear the beeps she knew that the clock was ticking down but it's going to be hard to walk away having just had 25 points in her hand and not got them you know it's literally slipped through her fingers well look she doesn't want to leave does she she plods over towards the left as our next lot of athletes come through. And our second German athlete out, Lucia Dorfel, is on the left. There's Camilla, her teammate, Hannah Moyle. It's German teammate, I mean, brushes up that slab. Lucia as well is someone who's uh, had a really good season, especially starting off strong in Hachiochi at the beginning and has done well since then. And Camilla now sets up for the beginning of this boulder. She'll look for the toe hook on the right. Hits the sloper first of all and then engages that toe. Izzy uh, on the far right. She's trying the Shauna method, I'm going to call it now. That <laughs> static start rather than the run. Well, she certainly had a look at it. And there's a lot of chalk left there now. So it's going to give some of the athletes a bit of a hint that maybe that's a method. Definitely, it's worth considering how that changes. What, Lucia on the other hand, just all eyes on her right now. Uh, as she's making really quick work of this first boulder. She had a really great boulder round in qualification, looking super powerful. And here she's looking confident and committed as she hits that last hole with a big smile. Yeah, good work from her. It shows how powerful Chloe was on that move when she did it statically, you know, real shouldery move. But I think that method from Lucia, Lucia was a little bit better, perhaps. She certainly hit it pretty cleanly. All right, well, Boulder 1 is looking doable, certainly, and quite important as our semi-final progresses. But the other three, still a bit of a mystery. Yeah, we know Sarah got close on Boulder 3 in the last rotation, hitting that 25, so getting one hand near or onto the last hole, but not quite holding it, so therefore not awarded the points. So I think we'll definitely be seeing athletes um, getting a bit more progress on that one. But yeah, interestingly, we've not seen much action on Boulder 4. Georgia getting so very close on that last rotation, though. So it's starting to step up. The level is starting to change, interestingly. You know, some of these athletes have had really good performances throughout this season and previous seasons. But 
it almost doesn't matter when you come into an event because it's what you do on that day. Of course, this is the boulder round of this event. So we have the lead portion of the event later on. These athletes have to do these four boulders, go away, reset. They can come watch the guys if they want, um, but at some point they'll be going back into isolation for the lead event that's taking place later on this evening. So yeah, it's definitely an intense event for the athletes. It really is. All that action we brought to you live by myself and Shauna Coxie here in the commentary box. Of course, there is a uh, social media going up on the IFSC Instagram channel, so you can get some behind the scenes action. IFC photographer Jan Ver is in the building taking some great photos, so go and check out his page and the IFSC page for that. Currently our top eight, and do remember things will change, but Erin is down in that bubble spot if we were just to take it from now. Of course, the uh, lead score gets added to this, and Hannah, we're watching her here, currently in the top spot with 34.9. Minute 40 to go on the clock. Those two green arches you can see, that's the entrance and exits for the athletes. Entrance on the right, exit on the left, and that leads to the isolation, which is buried deep in this stadium. It's a bit of a maze, this stadium. I've been trying to figure my way around. <laughs> it's a bit tricky, so um, yeah, isolation is incredible, but it's interesting you come through kind of a little tunnel to get to, to this competition wall, and. The isolation behind the wall is a good setup too, so it's great that there's a lot, a lot of really thought gone into what's here for the athletes. But right now, oh, what a move from Camilla! She had that left foot jammed in underneath the stop, and she's hit the ten. Some big shouts from her, and understandably, because she is fighting hard on this. Oh, she's got to match it though. Needs to figure out the feet. She's going for a sort of squat drop knee, hits it, and that's going to be enough for Camilla Moroni and Boulder two. We see a top on it. Really great climbing from Camilla there. What a strong performance. Yeah, she uh, didn't leave much behind there. Walks off with a bit of a strut. Great work from Camilla. Two boulders down, two left in this round. 26 seconds to go. And Hannah is making progress as well, but Izia is struggling on the start of this slab. Izia is actually our youngest athlete in the round. Um, it's a really great experience for her, even if she isn't having the round that maybe she would have wanted. We can see her walking off, looking a little bit frustrated. There's much more climbing to go. This is still got a lead route to do later. Hopefully she can take some learnings from this and yeah, take them forward. Yeah, that's the plan. We're about halfway through now this semi-final. Things are beginning to take shape. Manor Healy has just been announced to a huge reaction from the crowd. First French athlete we've seen, and this is going to be a big moment. There she is in the black, running onto the uh, boulder number one. Yeah, our first French athlete of four. Really incredibly strong performance, both in the men and the women, for the French team here in Laval. Now, Manon is someone who we'd call a lead expert, and yet the bouldering round, so this is really an important round for her because this is where... You know, she needs to do well because if she's too far behind going into the lead, she gives herself a lot of work to do. We know it's a specialism, but still. Yeah, so she finished the qualification with 148.9 points. 48.9 coming from Boulder, so 100 coming from Leeds. So yeah, her Boulder score was half of what her lead score was. However, we have seen Manon have some good Boulder rounds. She knows she's capable of that. And like you said, she needs to have a good round if she wants to kind of really perform well going through to get through to the finals like all athletes do but definitely more of a lead specialist like you say yeah, so that's Manon's task Chloe after her success on boulder one is powering her way up through that sequence and boulder two Petra is back in action on the red boulder in the middle and Sara will finish off her competition on the slab it's trying it statically as I think most people have a little tickle at they try the run and jump they start static then they make up their minds Let's see what Petra does here, that big powerful move up. I think that match method we've seen most people do. Yeah, it looks like a really good way to really commit to the yellow jib that's on there. It looks like a good hold, it's really not, there's not much positive on that hold. And then here, you've, you're, you're in a quite a stable position, but it's very hard to generate out of that position. The reason you're stable is because you've got kind of 
opposition between your hands and your feet, but in order to move to the right, it's really difficult to, to generate. Yeah, and we're seeing a big black streak down that slab where she uh, slipped, where a few others have. Sarah, though, is up and into the first hold. Yeah, she's established on this fourth boulder. Again, five points there, really important to gain if she's able to stay calm and really keep her hips nice and close to the wall as she steps across. She wants to land in a really solid position um, as she hits this 10, so her hand will go out, foot will come down. Foot didn't come down, so she wasn't able to stick it. She wants that foot to come down to that next hold, which is what will keep her on the wall. All right, well, no go for her, but look at this from Chloe. She's one move away. The power from this lady upgrades the right foot, tries to get a heel in that she's now sitting on, but falls trying to match. Yeah, it was expected that some athletes were going to drop the match on this climb. And also, it's a really difficult climb to get back up there because it is so powerful, like you said. Chloe's a very powerful athlete. I'm sure she's definitely capable. She'll make some adjustments. But the match on this, it is not over until it's over on this climb. We saw Camilla let out a big scream as she hit that match. And there was no question of whether she matched it or not. But it just shows how difficult it is to do that with how much effort she put in. Yeah, intense all the way. Petra goes for the big jump of the swing. It's watching Sarah here pull on. You can get hints from boulders sometimes. The fact that the zone is basically the second hold shows how difficult that start <laughs> yeah, is. Definitely. <laughs> and Sarah doing a different foot method, not the cross this time. Yeah, so both foot methods work. Um, this step through I think may be easier to get the 10 if you can reach from this position but person yes yeah, so she's managed to get that harder to get out of now I think she'll manage to get good kind of quite a bit from the 10 in order to do this foot swap yeah so you can see she's crimping really hard great work from her to be able to realize that and work to her span really knows her body well and what she's capable of yeah i thought she might just be going for the zone and then see but she's managed to make that sequence work and look at her score jumped up to four yeah there's not a lot on that 10 but there's enough to hold on to and give you something Interesting, she stepped down into the pocket of the foothold here. Um, the left hand that she's on now is really good, so she can take her time. She stepped her foot high. Interestingly, she's got right foot. I think she wants left foot, but maybe she can make it work. Yeah, you saw there as she reached up with her right foot on, it was really hard for her to get her weight to the right. That top hold is not very good. I would love to see her swap feet and get her left foot high next time. Hopefully she makes an adjustment and then she'll be able to stand a lot higher into that top hold. But quick work from her making it back up onto the boulder, but just slipping off that no texture section there. Yeah, so unlucky, and I don't think she's going to have time. It took her a long time before, and she is walking. So, Sarah is done. Manon is continuing. I think Chloe might be done too, and in fact, everyone calls it a day with eight seconds to go, and we will flick to the next round. So Manon Healy got the zone. Good start from her. Points on the board, but she does need to improve a little bit to keep in touch. Next up will be Evgenia from Ukraine. Likes to be called Genya, so that's what we'll uh, call her by. And there she is, running on first in the big wave to the crowd. And Hannah on her last boulder as well. She's put herself in a good position, just needs to cement that now with another couple of zones, and preferably a top for her. Interestingly, Hannah coming in for the last boulder. Um, it feels like she's had a really good round, but still only with 34.9 points. Yes, there's still more 25 points to gain, but a low scoring round, I would say, so far. No, you're correct. And we're coming into the top 10 now. Let's see if any of these athletes can make more of an indent into the score. Camilla is, has had her first go on this, now pulls on again into the starting hold. Hannah is still brushing. Genia, easy into the first moves on the top left of your screen. Now needs to do this throw towards the left with the right hand. Hits it with the left hand, as I said that. Yeah, so it kind of leads you into thinking maybe that might be the best way to do it because of the position that you're in. I think it would be a lot harder to hit and stick that left-handed, but maybe we'll see an athlete try and make that work. Genia kind of came off looking like she... Wanted to try something different, but we'll see on this next attempt. Uh, Hannah has a bit of a full start run there. Now gets going, and there's a big shout as Jenya hits the 10 on the top left. She's in. I'm fascinated to see how she does this last sequence. 
So is she going to go for the pop? Is she going to statically stretch it? We've seen a few ways through here. Oh, that's different. That is very different, very interesting. It looks like it might work. Oh. It does really strong climbing from Jenya. Smart climbing. That was brilliant. And she's happy with that, a big <laughs> cheer. That was a boss move. I love watching that. Brilliant from her. A huge <laughs> drop knee, tucked herself right in, got her hips right into the wall. And yes, smart climbing. She looks composed. She looks ready for a fight. It's cool. She does. Good to see. Yeah, she's one of those that you kind of highlight, or certainly I've highlighted. So let's see. Let's see it goes up. Hits the left hand, which means she can make progress if she can pull on it. Misses the right sloper, though. And look at Hannah on the top right of your screen. She's touching the 10. She's tickling it. We'll wait for the scores, though. She needs to use it. The judges will be watching hips, watching center of gravity, mass, and all those lovely things to try to see if she's used that tent. Hasn't been awarded it yet. But she can, as you can see, just stand there and figure it out. Creeps over once more. Needs to do a bit more movement to get the points. Yeah. The foot sequence on this slab definitely changes how it's climbed. So with the cross through, it's a much faster climb. With the, the step and matching feet like Hannah just did, we see athletes going much more slowly, much more statically. So it changes the style of the climb. She's crossed her feet through now, which I think will lead her to put her left foot up. Oh no, swapping back to go right foot up. I do think we want to see athletes go left foot if she can... Unfortunately, I just have slipped her right hand pops there. So this last move, you can either go left or right hand. Um, I actually have a really sore bit on my thumb from going left hand because you can almost turn the 10 into a, a thumb palm down. I guess it's not a palm anymore, a thumb down. I'm not That'll a move. Do. I, don't, I don't know how to Hey, you know the rules. It. We can make up whatever we want in here. Exactly. So uh, definitely not a thumb palm down. I don't have a thumb palm. Um, but yeah, so kind of pulling in with that thumb a really weird move um, and it felt easier for me to go left hand up uh, but it was set to go right hand so we'll see what the athletes choose it's quite hard to imagine going left hand because the, the left hand you're on is really good you don't want to let go of it um, we did try to do what Hannah just did right now and get the heel in and get bunched up into a little ball again I think we'll see some athletes doing that and trying that but it's a lot harder a lot more powerful in the legs Oh, well, that Hannah, we're talking about Hannah Moyle, who's on the top right, and it's the next sequence of moves, and she's back into that 10 zone as well. Took her time last time. She's going to do the same thing. Oh, holding that pinch. It's teeny tiny, that 10, but it is positive, and these girls have got such strong fingers, they're not letting go. No, absolutely not. Well, Hannah crosses through again, but she falls going left, and with 20 seconds, 27 seconds to go, she's really going to have to move now. And this is where the pressure of a slab starts to come in as the clock ticks down. But you can see in her approach that she knows she can do this. She knows how important those points are. Going from 10 points to 25, that's a huge difference. But just having to rush through it, unfortunately not gonna happen for her. Oh, wow, and you see her there. She um, just had one hand on the 25, wasn't able to make that match, but strong climbing from her. Yeah, good work. The German athletes leave together through that exit. And I'm enjoying this round. Interesting set of boulders. Not necessarily a fixed beta method to get through them as well, which is always good to see as a viewer. So good work from the setters. Right, Mia Crample runs on. Now, Mia Crample is a... I mean, I keep talking about contenders. There's a lot, obviously, who could win this, but... <laughs> I'm going to just repeat myself, but she is another one. No, she's already an Olympian. And she's got her eyes firmly set on 24 in Paris, and she could take this here this, uh, today and tomorrow. We talk about contenders. We're in, we're in the top 10 now, so definitely every single athlete that's coming out is for sure a contender, and it is what you put down on the day, of course, but this is one round of this day. Tomorrow we do it all again, Boulder, and then lead for the final. So there's a long way to go, but like I said earlier, it's an impossible one to call because we've got athletes doing insane performances like Manon here. We call her a lead specialist, but she is on the most powerful Boulder out here right now and looking strong. Unfortunate slip for her there, but really important to get that five points. That was massive. I can't believe she held that left hand, feet sliding down, but she caught it. Look at Chloe as well. She's making progress on the coordination on the uh, slab three. And then look at Petra. She's doing the cross-through method, can see that 10. 
I love how much chalk is on the wall as well around that slab where the athletes have been pressing into the wall with their palms. Yeah, it's a it's a weird movement, and especially when you're stood up there on a slab, it's a, it's a tricky place to be when you're in a comfortable position, knowing you need to move because you you don't want to, and it's it's almost a strange moment where you get time and space, and you can kind of have a moment, um, which some athletes like, some athletes don't like, and it's really telling of how they reacted in that moment. Petra opting to change her beta now, so really smart climbing from her to do that foot swap and opt for the big stretch across. A really, really far reach for her though. You can see she looked a little shorter than some other athletes in that position. So maybe we'll see her go back to the foot cross next time. Yeah, she's got time to figure it out. Got just under three minutes. Such an interesting atmosphere here in the stadium. And part of it's with the DJ, and I always talk about DJs, but he's got the music at a sort of a low level. And it's something about the lighting and the pressure at the moment in the stadium. It feels tense. The DJ knows how to ramp this crowd <laughs> up. He plays with them. And as he should, you know, it's, it's, it's a show, right? And I think the crowd know we've got a lot of French athletes coming out later. And I think things will change as we get oh, moved yeah. through this round, that is for sure. But... You know, in a moment like this with athletes kind of struggling and trying to find their flow on the boulders, it's important not to ramp up. We've got we've got a lot of climbing yeah. left to go. We don't want to start at 100%. We're building things, but it is very tense here. Hopefully, if you're watching at home, some of that comes through. It's sweaty hand time as we are nearing the last couple of athletes to come out onto the mats. Now, let's watch Petra. She did the cross with the leg the first time. Will she change it up now, but a bit of a bobble? And interesting, I was just about to say, her foot that she's standing on, so that first purple, looks like they're standing on the edge of the texture. They are not. There's a tiny little lip in the no texture part of that hold. And when I say no texture, that's the darker purple that you can see when no chalk is sticking. So it's entirely slippy. And I was about to explain that as Petra's foot slipped, so I appreciate Petra showing us what that <laughs> looks like, but I do hope we see her making progress through this climb again. It makes for a really uncomfortable position until you're in balance. Doing this foot swap feels so strange because you get very little feedback from that hold. You saw her slip again. Meanwhile, on boulder three, Chloe sticking the coordination move for the first time and we get our first look at this final move. It's a big launch from Chloe, but she slightly missed the feet coming through. And Manon, has she got anything left in the tank? She did a hero save of a move on this zone earlier on. That might have burnt her a bit. Yeah, maybe fatiguing. And also, we haven't really talked about Nia as we hit the minute mark. She's making progress, but nothing yet for the top. But she's got the... Uh, and yeah, we didn't get much time to talk about Jenya on the first one. She yeah. did it so quickly. Jenya, much more known for her slab climbing. Her percentage of tops on boulders like Boulder 1 is very low, but she's gone away and worked on it. And clearly that work has done something because she climbed incredibly well. Meanwhile, back to Chloe, because she was close to this last hold last time. Will she stick it this time? Not quite. Needs to go with much more vigor, much more power into that movement. It's going to be hard to know how to do it precisely. The foot, right foot will want to come round. Unfortunately, we won't get to see her on that again. You can see the frustration in her face. She knows that's possible for her. The last hold on Boulder 3 has been made better. So originally it was not as good as it is. So I think they've added a jib into that just to make it a little more positive. Um, but to get the height to get there, there's going to be a lot of power needed from the legs. Really intense move to do at the end of a tricky boulder. Yeah, it's a hard one. We haven't seen anyone unlock it yet. Vita Lucan runs out. Now, I want to talk about Vita Lucan's knee because obviously we know that she's had this injury and I was worried about it yesterday. I was watching her walk around the stadium. Although obviously still climbing well, I think she's struggling slightly with that left knee at the moment. More of a limp than I've seen from her. Yeah, and we, we've talked about the fact that it's been a long season. It's not uncommon for athletes to pick up injuries throughout the season. So, yeah, we do see some tape. We do see some kind of slight limps but she's a really strong climber we've seen her win a gold medal this year in a world cup in a lead world cup her first first gold so yeah she definitely knows how to keep pushing and to keep fighting through these rounds yeah this is kind of it you're going to leave everything on the table last opportunity this year for these european athletes to get a ticket look at jenya powerful up 
trying to find purchase for that right hand. You can see it. See a door well. full there. Really strong effort from her on her first attempt of boulder three. And we see Jenya into the five. Great climbing from her. She has had her cornflakes this morning, nearly hit the right as she slides off. Her cornflakes? Well, I just, what? This, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that as an athlete Maybe. nutritional breakfast. You know, a little bit of cornflakes, a bit of milk. I'm not sure there's much nutrition in cornflakes, Matt. Sure, they I'm might, a nutritionist. They might need a bit more to do this round, you know. Maybe she had a slice of banana on top. Who knows? <laughs> but whatever she's had, she's looking in good form out there on Boulder 2. And Georgia as well tried a heel hook on the bottom of this move earlier on. She changed away from that. Oh, look at Vita. She's into the 10. Hits the next hold and one move away from her. Right, now let's see. I have a feeling Vita might try a Chloe-esque static move here, but let's have a look. Yeah, often opt in for the more static, super powerful, but she's so strong in the shoulders. She is. Her right foot is what is holding her on right now, so the heel was holding her on. She was trying to look for a toe hook. What we saw Chloe do is open her hips out, really, really pull into that heel to throw her hips into the wall. Yes, I'm talking about hips again, <laughs> but it was important, and it's what held her onto the wall, and that's what... Uh, Vita lost there as she was trying to find that toe hook. But I think we'll see her up on that top again. She's got enough time to have another really good go, potentially more goes if she needs. Now, we talk about coordination moves a lot. Tia got that move in the middle, but it's struggling to figure it out again. And sometimes coordination moves are like that. Sometimes an athlete will do it once, and then it will just be in their brain. But Lucia's struggling a bit to repeat. Let's see, she sets herself up, goes. I don't think we've seen her stick the coordination oh, move just Sorry. yet. I no, thought she just hit the looking 10. at the scores and there checking. I don't think she's got the 10. Checking I hadn't missed anything there. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just I'm psyched for the athlete. I think she can do it, so we'll give her the positivity. I love I yeah. love it, Matt. <laughs> just, I'll just but, award it. But yeah, we've seen her get really close to it, um, and she's trying to figure it out. She's making very quick work at the start. And we see Camilla on Boulder 4 here. She's a shorter athlete, so she's going to need to do this a slightly different way. Again, not necessarily meaning it's harder or easier, just different. She'll need to go dynamically to that 10, but it led her to having to commit to that foot. Potentially easier, maybe harder, who knows, but different for sure, depending on height on this boulder. I'm really interested to see which foot she takes up here. She's gone left foot. I think this is the better method. And again, now she can go either hand, but now swaps the feet. So if she can stay stable on this and keep tension, we could see a top. We do. Great work Re from Camilla. Really great work from her. And our first top of that boulder. Great way to finish the round. She doesn't look very happy. It's been a tough round, but those 25 points are really important. And we get to see another look at the last move of Boulder 3 with Lucia. Yeah, she was. Chloe did this palm method. She's trying it a little differently. Wants to go up and stand on top of that green volley, but she's changing her mind now. The root setters spent a very long time trying to force the athletes to do this palm down jump for this last move. I do think there are other ways around it. Um, speaking to the head root setter Tagara, I said, do you think it's, uh, there's a way to cheat it? And he said, I don't like the word cheat. I don't think beta, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's breaking the intended beta as opposed to cheating. Um, she was trying with a high foot there, which looked a lot harder and unfortunately doesn't have time to have another attempt at that move. But again, gets the 10 points, so really important for her. Yeah, the final athlete is Vita left out, but she's going to be timed out too, so all of them leave. Now I'm walking away having had that 25 oh, points yes. in one hand. So close from her, couldn't get back to that position. And we will have another rotation. So we know the general layout so far. As it stands, fairly low scoring, and that makes the tops that are possible very important. And of course, the pressure ramps up. The athletes don't know how the other athletes have climbed certain boulders. So they have to figure it out for the first time when they're out on the mats. And now we've got two French athletes, and Hélène Genicourt comes out. And she's another one, very strong boulderer, but perhaps has her specialism more sat in the lead category. So another one who needs to do well to keep in touch here this morning. Yeah, you say that she did get 100 points in lead. However, she got 84.6 in the boulder qualification round. So a lead specialist having had gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals in the lead comps. We've not seen her do that in boulder, but in the qualification round of this competition, she had a great performance. Well, she's been working hard at it for sure, trying to get that power up. 
And the nice thing about the way this season has worked out is it does mean that you can focus on this competition. A lot of athletes not going to China if they'd already got the points and they've had a lot of time to sit in the gym and prepare for this. And obviously working for Helen. Now we're watching Mia here as she rocks up on that toe. And as Shauna said earlier on, if you missed it, there is a blocker under there to stop a, a heel toe jam going on. Yeah, so you can definitely get some tension in the heel toe kind of locking that foot between the blue and the black, but you can't get your foot all the way to the back, which is what I managed to do, and it was very scary. So they put a blocker in to stop that happening, so we don't see anyone falling off and leaving their foot in the in the crack that's created. That's good. Thank you for saving <laughs> ankles out there. <laughs> it was more for my own ankles, I'm not going to lie. No, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. <laughs> Well, Manon Healy is on your main screen, the second French athlete out, and Chloe Collier is on the far right from Belgium. She does this run and jump method up, hits the starting position. Now she's established there, and now she can begin the boulder, which shows how complicated those first moves are. I've got some stats, and it's interesting with Ellen. Her best boulder performance in a World Cup was in Kitzbühel in 2013. She wow. came 19th. So yeah, it's cool to see that she's really stepping it up and still pushing. She's 29 years old, but she's definitely really, I mean, she's in the top 10 here. You know, you can see that she's definitely fighting for an Olympic spot, that's for sure. Yeah, as is this woman here, Mia Crample. She wants another ticket. Big puff out of her cheeks. She hits that first zone. A couple of athletes to go. Zili Abzu, Stashigeo, Laura Rogera and Oriane Berton will finish off this women's semi-final. They're out soon. Helene struggling with the stand-up move on Boulder 3 at the moment. And Chloe much more easily into that starting position. Seems to have that nailed now. Right, she begins the journey over. She's going for the foot match. You can see she now looks down at her feet, but it's a little bit blind. And the reach is interesting because it is quite stretched out there. It is. So you can reach to it or you could go and slightly more dynamically like we saw Camilla. And it actually looked easier for Camilla because she was committed to that movement. So yes, you can reach it if you're taller, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier. However, Chloe did reach it. She was really strong with her um, footwork through that midsection. And we see her approaching the last hold now. I expect she might know it's possible because she might have just heard the crowd after Camilla had a very successful attempt, potentially seeing her come back into ISO. Opting for the right foot, left foot is tripod, so really pushing into the wall, keeping her three points of contact intention. Reaches up, just sticks it, very precarious. Her hips shift really far to the right. A good performance from her. She wants something from the crowd. She is happy with that, and the crowd, they're enjoying it too. Well, Chloe Collier made a statement. She's 68.7, 10 points out in front of Camilla Moroni, and that's a good score from Chloe Collier. She will leave happy with that into the lead round. As she should. Often we see Chloe struggling on the slabs, much more of a powerful climber, so really, really great to see her get that 25 points there. Well, my list of potential favourites is growing as the semi-final progresses. I've got lots in my head now. And look, Manon as well. She makes that first move work. Let's see what she can do, but slide out of your screen. And Chloe giving a little cheer for Manon on her way past, which is cool to see. <laughs> well, Mia has a toe locked in underneath, hits the left hand. Haven't said much about Helen yet. She's struggling on the first few moves here. She pulls on just in your screen, on the main screen and on the top left. Mia also not having the start, we would imagine. Um, hasn't hit the... 10 zone on either of the first two boulders so definitely not a high scoring one for her just yet still two boulders to go of course but hopefully she's not feeling that frustration and able to stay focused it amazes me how fresh Mia still is for competing she's done so many world cups this year you know she was in China recently and uh, she's done out of uh, IFSC competition so she's, she's really fully into the comp circuit this year all right, next set to come out, Zilia Avazou, the young French climber. Her brother, Sam Avazou, is pretty handy himself, and she gets a big reaction, as we'd expect, as she comes out. And her mum coaching, she was in the pits watching, a previous climber, um, competition climber as well. So, yeah, full family affair. It really is, yeah. That French team, very, very close. So, Vita's back on as well. 
Ooh, now Boulder a good scrub. She came close to Boulder one. And Zelia is taking a moment before she gets underway just to read this Boulder. You'd see her runs up to her start and Jenya will boost her way up towards the starting holds of Boulder number three. I really enjoy the split screen, but I find it so hard to know where oh, to look. Oh, yeah, nightmare. <laughs> My brain just separates into five and it's a problem. Uh, hopefully you guys are keeping up with this as well. Lead later on and of course the men's rounds today as well. And tomorrow is the finals where we get that Olympic ticket giveaway for the gold medalist. Whoever wins this comp will get an Olympic place. That's what the athletes have in front of them. And whoever wins this comp gets the Olympic spot. It means that they don't have to go or they can't go to the Olympic qualifier series next year. So for them, it means all their focus, their preparation can be on the Olympic Games. It really changes their preparation and everything kind of coming into that season next year. Well, look, we talked about Zelia Abazu want to watch look at this from her into the second zone she's one move away looks like she wants to do it with a bit of a static reach it's a long way for her though fingertips are on now she needs to work out the right foot gets the toe makes the match great work from Zelia I love that we got to see that focus and that real determination in her face in her eyes and that flick to satisfaction and joy as she hit that second hand on the 25 and the crowd loved it too. Awesome, well, look at this as well from Vita. Head almost down by her knees as she tries to pull on for that first climb, for her first few holds. And this is Jenya, misses that slab, that right foot slab we've seen happen time and again. There's a big streak left in the middle of it. So Vita has a long look at the first few moves here. Hasn't got the zone yet, so struggling just to get established on this boulder. It's a bit of a tricky kind of start, and I imagine if her knee is feeling vulnerable, this is going to be a, a difficult position for her to get established in because it is a crouch position, lots of pressure going through that left knee in order to kind of get established and then uh, let alone stand up. And then, yeah, to get to that five, there is some climbing to do. Um, it's not it's not an easy five to gain on boulder two, that's for sure. Sometimes we see the five being a little more achievable like boulder one, um, but I'd say the, the two, three and four are difficult fives to get, let alone getting the 10 and then the 25. Absolutely, the scoreboard uh, backs you up on that one. Yeah, and you're right about that left leg of Vita. I mean, she's had, I'm pretty sure she had some major surgery on that, came back from that left knee, and it's the first time I've seen it strapped. And this is where you were saying, standing up on that left knee, you kind of cringe, but she's in now. She is, and she changed her body position significantly there to make it work for her, which was great to see. Um, she is a really strong, powerful climber, so I think if we can see her get up and established into this next section, we could see something special for her. Meanwhile, Jenya just stuck the coordination on Boulder 3. Again, a really good 10 points for her. Can she make the 25, though? She's on the top middle of the screen. And she's and trying to press her way up. She doesn't want to do that jump and palm. You say she doesn't want to. We well, don't know if she's seen it. It's true. hard to know. This is the way the root setters were trying. We don't oh. think it's possible. Uh, it was before they moved the hole, but they've tried to make that not work for the climbers. We don't know if she's not seen the palm down jump way or just doesn't want to try that and wants to try and figure out another way. Hopefully we see her move through that and get to have another attempt at that move. And it would be great to see Lucia on this middle section as well, but she is struggling to get established on this slab. She is. I want to see this again from Jenny. That was outrageous what she attempted, that launch over. Let's see what she does this time. There's so much chalk on that green volume. I wonder if she's seen the palm or not. It's like they've almost tried to make it obvious. I think she's going to try now. Big flick. She's pogoing. The crowd are kind of getting up. She doesn't want to. She has to make it work. Ten seconds. Whatever she does, is it full commitment? But she can't quite get it. So close. She knows it. Head in hands. She looks back up at the boulder. She doesn't want to walk away. But there is a slab coming. Jenya is a slab queen. She's one of the best slab climbers in the world. Um, so it'll be great to see her on that. And hopefully she can kind of Take a deep breath after after a tricky finishing move on that boulder. All right, another rotation. Stasigo comes on. 
Good qualifying performance from her yesterday and essential to Stasha. She looks quite relaxed, so it, hopefully she's in her zone. I'd argue amazing qualifying performance yeah, from her. You say good, but she did all the boulders. She's the first athlete that will be out here on the mats that did all four boulders in qualification. We have Laura and Oriane coming. But right now, all eyes on Sasha, because like you said, she's looking relaxed. She's looking in a great headspace for this comp. She also had an amazing lead performance, yep. um, something she's been working really hard on. She got... 99.7 points in the boulder round and 96.1 in the lead round. So yeah, really, really cool to see her doing so well. Again, another athlete who I think is older because she's so experienced. She's 25 years old. She's got such great experience. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to watch Stasha climb, as I am all the athletes, of course. Exactly. I was joking with Stasha that she's found some endurance. She won an out of IFSC lead comp quite recently, so she's certainly in form. Let's see what Stasha can do. She's on the top left and now the center of your screen. We have Helen on boulder two. Mia Crample comes back. She's on boulder three. And Manon Healy will finish things off on boulder four. Stasha, what a launch over. Holds that right hand, which we know is nasty. No hesitation from her here. No hesitation, but she also didn't get that knee bar in the first time. Missed the higher yellow. All right, one move away for Stasha. Let's see what she can do. She's setting herself up for a bit of a throw to the left. I think she is, but that left foot bobbles. And a scary move there. She is putting her hands in the air saying she's okay, but she did have a quite an intense fall there. She's holding her neck right now, but we she seems to be okay. It was a big foot slip for her. So, yeah. yeah. I think she'll take a moment to recover and have a little breath now. She will. She has a word with herself on the top left. We see now Manon Healy creeping across towards that second zone. Manon, again, she is a shorter athlete, so she's going to have to go quite quickly to this, forcing that step through. We saw Camilla kind of hit the 10 and connect the dots, so she, she hit the 10, crossed her foot through, and stopped really solid. Manon there just leaving her foot behind slightly. If she can bring that through a little faster, she'll have more time to be more accurate and then hopefully get a really stable position once her body stops moving. All right, that's the plan for Manon. She will rest a little bit. Lots of time left on the clock as we come up to the two minute mark. Helen as well shaking out and now Manon runs back towards the slab. Interesting the angle. She's very straight onto it. Some of the athletes have been running slightly forward towards the left. That's what I was just about to say, Matt. <laughs> we'll make a coach out of you yet. <laughs> I dread to um, think. <laughs> Yeah, so Camilla did the same thing. She ran really direct, which is not what it looks like would make sense, but it allows you to get a much more stable position when you hit it. Stasha on the first boulder here, climbing much more smoothly this time. She seems to have settled into this rhythm a lot better. Hopefully she can stay really solid in that foot this time, as she does. You saw the right foot there, flick into the toe hook. Way more stable for her and a great first boulder. She only loses 0.1 because she's only had two attempts. So she won't get the full 25, but as close as you can get to it. Yeah, that will settle her down. She leaves. Plenty of time to rest as well. Good work from Stasha. Manon, meanwhile, still has work to do with a minute left. Crosses over towards the first zone hold. And this is the move she struggled on before, this next sequence. Mia is up, drops the first hold. Manon was opting for a foot swap there, so changing her beta. So instead of stepping her foot through, trying to swap her feet, it's not the hardest foot swap to do, but when you fall off that foot swap, you only you learn as you fall. So it's really hard to gain any understanding when you're stood on the wall because you can't really feel through the feet. Often in climbing on slabs, you can move your foot around a little bit to get some feeling on whether there's an edge, whether there's a lip, but when you're on no texture, if you do that, you slip. So what's happening when you see climbers slip off this slab is that you can't make any adjustments or you're out of there. So you can only make them once you pull back on and try again. Um, so I think we'll see Manon make that adjustment, stepping slightly further left as she's done now to leave room for that right foot to do the foot swap. I want you learn when you fall as an inspirational quote on my wall. That is a brilliant <laughs> statement for Shauna there. Well, Manon can't learn this time. She falls two seconds to go and it's over for her. So 
A little down on the leaderboard for Manon. We will wait and see. And Laura Rogera is up next from Italy. She is waiting on the bottom right of your screen to run out. Penultimate athlete before Orian Berton takes to the stage. It was quite fun on the fourth boulder we were testing. And the root setters uh, often test in uh, like tennis shoes or in, in trainers, uh, usually ones with quite good grippy soles, but obviously they're testing for such a long period of time. They don't want to be in climbing shoes the entire time. That would be too painful. And I said, no way, get your climbing shoes on on this one. It is easier at the start in your trainers. Get your climbing shoes on. He was like, what about barefoot? I was like, nope, the climbers aren't allowed to go barefoot. It's like, get your climbing shoes on, it's harder. And we had some good banter between the root setters um, debating whose shoes were going to be stickiest on the no texture. It all goes on after hours here in the stadium, <laughs> I tell you. This it's is the place to be. <laughs> it sure does. All right, well, Vita stands up tall. She hits the first hold. And Zili Abazu had a good first boulder, is quickly up towards the first zone. Laura slipped and Jenya is on a slab, so we're hoping she makes some progress with that, her specialism. Look at this from Zelia, she's looking to bump this right hand. Yeah, so again, one of the shorter climbers, but she did look like she could bump and make that work. She didn't try the pull through. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what she does on that next attempt, to see what adjustments she makes. Well, we're watching Jenya now. Let's see which method she uses. Will it be this foot swap? She's going for the cross. So this bit's OK, but it's the stretch over to the left, which means you've got to quickly step that left foot down and she misses the hold. Just slightly misses that foot there. Um, maybe a little too quick in the movement, so she wasn't able to have the time to look down at her foot. Yeah, so she will reset. Oh, right hand falling for Vito. I was about to say she's looking solid on that, but she just missed the thumbs underneath on that time. And Laura at the moment is really struggling with this throw towards the left. Vita goes again. Much better this time, both those thumbs making contact. It's one of those boulders where I think as a viewer, you look at this, this red boulder and you think, well, you know, why aren't they just pulling through? It's a big hold on that, uh, on the uh, first zone hold. But as you said, just way more awkward than it looks on camera. Oh, and just way, the hold is so terrible. It's hard to explain. I actually got a ladder out to go up and feel that five just to spend some time figuring out if there was any different way to hold it it's just really bad yeah terrible hole well Vita's about to hit that hole we're talking about keep an eye on Zelia as well doesn't make the left hand that right hand there from Vita is the one you were talking about and immediately she falls it is but I could have easily been talking about the holes that Zelia was on because they're also absolutely terrible again I got a ladder out to go in and feel them check if there was any secrets that I was missing there weren't they're just really hard boulders <laughs> Um, coming back to Vita and her knee, she actually had a meniscus stern partially torn ACL in 2019. She did have surgery on that, made an incredible recovery. Um, but it is, it is taped for the first time that we've seen. Yeah. Um, she's wearing the, the, the small brace on there. So it doesn't seem to be holding her back too much. She did a really good effort on Boulder 2 to, to work around that. And she's having some great tries here. Hopefully it's not in her mind as she's trying this coordination. But yeah, you can see that on her knee right there. Yeah, something she's going to have to deal with. And right now, trust me, it won't be <laughs> in her mind. She'll be ignoring it. Look at Jenya looking for this cross through. Can she hit the left foot? She can this time. Great work from her. And Laura as well as set. And Zelia goes again. Lots of action on the screen right now. So much going on. Zelia Better from Zelia. Five. Can she flick into that blue? Jenya's approaching the last move on the slab. Left hand slipped, but look at Jenya had the right foot on the final, right hand on the final hole. Couldn't get the left up. A minute to go. Oh, it's getting tense here in the stadium. Vita has just not stopped climbing on this boulder as well. Every time I look up, she's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, often with coordination boulders, you can learn a lot with each attempt, and you see athletes almost rapid fire to try and gain that that understanding. Um, one thing I think is a misconception is that a coordination boulder is easy before and easy after. And this is a great example of that not being the case. The start is tricky to get established. The coordination is in the middle. And we've seen the ending is not a given whatsoever. It is not over once you've done that coordination. Uh, tricky boulders here, but Jenya is making these, this sequence look much, much better. Pinching 
that small purple hold. Zelia getting massive support as she comes up towards the second zone area. And she's in, she's hit the right hand. Right, keep an eye on Boulder 2 and the main screen. The clock is ticking down. There is a lot of action happening on this screen. Zelia with one hand on the top, Jenny with one hand on the top. No. Both athletes ripping and falling down, head in hands. Oh, I thought we were going to see pure euphoria there, but both athletes falling as the clock ticked towards zero. Oh, what a moment. Whew. Right. I think we need to take a long breath. That, right? Exactly. And well, luckily things are going to start to wind down after this because Ariane Berton is in. What a bold around she has. And she is, well, currently certainly one of the main favourites for tomorrow's finals. We shall see. She's got to get through the semi-final first. And here we go. Deep breaths if you're an Oriane Berton fan. Stasha on boulder number two as well. And that's Helene Jenico on boulder three and Mia Krampel on boulder four. And this is the last time we'll see boulder one. So drink it all in. We won't get to see this ever again. As Shauna said earlier, this is the one and only chance the athletes get to climb these boulders. We didn't talk much about Laura on that first boulder. She did get the five, but she didn't get the ten. Orien, however, making very quick work of this <laughs> this boulder right here. Can she stick the first, the last move on her first attempt? I'm just shaking my head as I'm watching this instinctual climb of Orien. One move to go though. Oh, look, so smooth from her. Well, less than a minute, and she leaves the mats. Perfect start for Orien, and that's the full 25 for her. Yeah, really strong climbing. Great to see her looking composed and collected. She had a great bold round. She scored 99.8. However, she did fall on the first block of, of the round in qualification. Not something we're familiar with seeing. Almost looked a little nervous, entirely understandable. And I think a lot of the athletes did enjoy having that qualification round just to get into the rhythm of competing, to settle the nerves a little bit and find their flow. Um, Ariane clearly looking very ready, very composed and you know she's she's definitely here to fight for that Olympic ticket she's not been shy about that it, check out her socials she's uh, talked about having her new biceps and being ready to to bring them out to the show so um, good to see her kind of definitely finding her stride in this competition yeah good work from her well Helen her teammate tries a different method for that first move really stretching out with the right hand and Mia is also struggling to get off the ground. Stasha made some progress on her boulder. Oh, Helen with a bobble there, nearly fell. Now reaches into the zone hold with the right hand and she'll begin this coordination sequence now. Right, left, calms herself down, you can see. And you can see their minds constantly working. Bouldering or well, climbing is such an interesting sport to watch and I think especially bouldering because of those unlimited attempts within within the time frame of course you get to see athletes problem solving firsthand on the mats just as anyone who goes climbing or bouldering would do themselves but to do it in that space in that moment in front of the crowd with all the lights on it's i think it's fascinating to watch it really is it's so exciting and we get some wonderful shots so thank you to the team behind the scenes doing that all right three athletes left and look at our top eight as they stand. So Chloe Collier with that fantastic final boulder. She is in the top swap with 68.7. Camilla Moroni and Sia Dorfil, Jenya Kazbakova, Petra Klingler up there in fifth position. Hannah Moyle, Zili Avazu and Sarah Chopper make up our top eight. And we saw when Jenya came off that slab, she is a very, a very good slab climber. She knows she was capable of doing that. To have that 25 in her hand and lose it, you can see there how much difference that would have made had she managed to hold it. So you know that the points that they're, that they're chasing are just insanely important going towards that next round. It's setting things up nicely for our lead round. The scores are so close, it's really going to be a, an exciting finale for the semi-final. That's later on this evening, the lead round starting at 7 p.m. Central European time. After this, around about 2 p.m., we have the men's boulder round. So you'll have a couple of minutes to go away and just rest a little bit after all this action as we come back and join myself and Shauna later on. But we haven't finished yet. Boulder one is done, of course. But three boulders are in action. Mia is not finding the start of this boulder easy. 
she's not having the round that I think she's capable of and that's going to be difficult to manage while she's out there. Like you said, she's done a lot of competing this season. It's been an incredibly hard year for all the athletes with so many competitions. Um, but yeah, I definitely tend to expect more from Mia. Yeah, she's only got 9.6 at the moment. She's done in 18th, so needs something special on Boulder 4. Stasha, meanwhile, on the main screen, just shaking her head and laughing. That's how I felt on that border too. I can understand and sympathize. It's just a straight note boulder. There's just so little to kind of gain purchase on that border. Oh. It's been great to see athletes really fighting. Helen with a bit of frustration. She has to go with no top. She leaves the stage. And Mia gives a wave. She didn't get the magic ending. And that is going to leave her a huge task in the semifinals for the lead later on. 9.6. For me, a crample. Well, Laura runs out. And Zelia Abazu on women's three. And Vita Lucan will finish off her comp. Interestingly, with low scores, it's going to be almost impossible to try and pull that back. Because even if Mia comes out and gets 100 points, Obviously, the other athletes get their points too. So, yeah, it's it's going to be tough to kind of process that, to deal with that, and to to use this comp as experience potentially going forward if you don't get the result that you want. There's definitely a lot to learn from every single round in the competition. Laura here matching that blue hold. Really impressive finger strength from her, really opening her hips in order to stay underneath and on that foot. We see her come into the powerful section now, but great climbing from her, her toe hook, keeping tension just the same as Zelia did there. Yeah, she had to heal in all the time when she did that bottom sequence as well. Can't believe she had the flexibility to turn the knee and look at it again as she comes into the top. One move away. She needs to get that left foot engaged somehow. Now she does, makes the match. Good work from Laura. From the start to the finish, every single hold she held there, she was not letting go. There was nothing stopping her getting to the top of that boulder then. Gutsy from her. She leaves. Look at that head bump as she goes. Vita falls, Zelia, one, two, but not quite. Oh, what an interesting scoreboard as we look down that list. Ayala as well, as I'm looking at surprises, not the best round from her, down with only 10 points at the bottom. And Vita as well, 19.2, she needs some more points out of this as well. Now she's up to 23.6 with that first zone, but she knows how important the top will be here. This is stressful, Shauna, because it feels like you can lose this comp during this boulder round. It certainly feels it with these scores at the moment. It's, I, uh, it's tense. Yeah, I think you could potentially lose your place in finals with that purple final 25 yeah, slipping exactly. out of your hands. And I really hope we don't see that for some of the athletes. But oh. it's too much. It's, it's only 10.45 here. And uh, I've gone through a lot this morning already. I <laughs> hope you're enjoying the coverage back at home. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Shorter Coxie here in the commentary box. And we're almost finished on this semi-final. Last couple of athletes to go. And Vita begins her journey towards the 10 again. I keep catching myself looking at the rankings, so the position of the climbers after this round, who's in where against who, um, and what that means coming into the lead round, because we do have athletes that are lead dominant. However, it's almost irrelevant, their ranking. It's all about points. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I keep catching myself on that. It's almost still an adjustment that I'm making, <laughs> um, but it's just really shows how the points that you can see on the wall, we can see her progressing towards the 10 right now. Every single one that they can collect is incredibly important. It is, and the brilliant thing about this new format is it makes the athletes climb right till the very end. So it's that a different experience. A great shot there of Vita's eyes locked on that 10. What you see her doing is she progresses towards the 10, her hand hits it, and then her eyes shoot straight down to the foot. Not quite quick enough with the foot placements in order to get the right balance position. Hopefully we see her back up there again, making some adjustments in her movement. Yeah, and talking about adjustments in movement, Zelia now has a big one to come. And she's not getting close on that move yet. Yeah, I'm looking a little confused on the beater, I think, so how, how it's done. Um, we've seen athletes go two hands to the second one. We've seen athletes go one, two. What Zelia's doing, she's going one, two, but I think she needs to go one, two, three. So moving her hands much quicker. 
And Vita, meanwhile, struggling to get established, struggling to get back up on this board. I really hope we see we see her make it back up there because she was really close to getting that 10. Yeah, she was now going a little bit backwards as we hit the minute mark. Yeah, and then Zelia is getting a long brush here. Yeah, I, I look at the where Zelia is looking. She just can't quite work out that middle part. Oh, Vita falls again, and you wonder, I mean, I don't want to bang on about the knee too much, but running on those mats, maybe not getting the power pushing off. Also, these mats don't have carpet, so they get very dirty. Running on them towards the boulder is quite True. tricky because your feet get really dirty. Yeah. They need a red carpet style thing to lead them in. Right, let's see if Zelia's worked this out. She hasn't. Big slip again, pushing really quite aggressively down on her foot as opposed to into the wall. This is not giving her any height or progress towards the, the jump, unfortunately for her. A surprise, I would have expected to see her getting through and attempting that last move. Yeah, well, it's a tough round for everyone so far. We thought it might open up as we came towards the end, but nope, everyone is finding it hard going. Uh, Oriane Berton has been announced before she's even come into the stadium. She's got a big cheer. Helene as well on the slab, and Stasha gets her teeth into number three. And our last look at Boulder number two. Interestingly, coming into this round, Boulder number two was my least favorite. Mm -hmm. um, from trying these boulders and feeling them out myself, I wasn't too sure on how Boulder two would work and what it would look like, but I really enjoyed watching it, and it seems to have really separated the pack as well. Yeah, it's been a good one, hasn't it? It's been an exciting round, full stop. And here is Oriane easily through. Remember how easy she did that first boulder? And she goes for the heel like Laura did. Let's see if she can rock. Now changes it into a toe. It was impressed about Laura. She had the, the heel in the entire way through. It was insane flexibility from her. Yeah, really locking out, um, like locking right out with the hip. Look at this from Oriane though, power. holding my breath <laughs> just realized that she went up there the white holds that she's on have no very very little texture and um, they're very slippery hence why she was looking for that heel underneath the volume we saw Zelia and Camilla both take a toe hook however Ariane is a little taller than both of those athletes so the toe hook wouldn't quite work for her hence why she was trying to find that heel and Stasha with a shake of her head down at the audience and we're watching Helen <laughs> yeah that sums it up trying to pull on statically and giving up on that one and she's going back to the run and jump. You can see Oriane's coach in the shot on Boulder 2. He's not allowed to help his athlete. He's allowed to shout encouragement, but he can't tell them what to do. Neither can any of the coaches. Just worth remembering, with all those iPads out, sometimes you might get the uh, feeling that they get to share things, but they're not allowed to. Yeah, it's an interesting one because they can cheer and they can cheer at the right times, you know, and the crowd cheer at the right times. And as a round progresses, the crowd get more knowledgeable as well. And that for sure has an impact. Of course, they the rules make it as fair as possible. But as the crowd learn the boulders and they learn when to cheer and what the right beater is. But on both sides of that, the athletes need to stay within themselves and true to what their best beater might be. Because yes, the crowd might cheer if someone else has done it a certain way, but that might not be their way. So there's a lot going on and it definitely shows maturity in the athletes here right now who are taking their time to rest. They're not rushing, they're not jumping straight back on. They're trying to really figure this out and give their best performance that they can. Yeah, it's all about timing, isn't it? And as we come up to two minutes 20, Oriane has been sitting and resting for a while. Now she stands back. I think she feels like the beater is pretty solid through that bottom half, certainly. So she's giving herself all that opportunity to get something back before going again. And Stasha is in as well. Easy up into that press. Now it's all about this move, though. Oh, good work from... And a great example yeah. of figuring out your own way. Yeah, swinging in makes it work. Now we'll have a moment to chalk out. This is, could be a huge moment for Stasha here. If she can get this done. Oh, but that's foot slipped. As she went, she manages to make it stick, holds the palm down, makes the match, and that is the first send of Boulder 3 that we've seen and huge for Stasha on the scoreboard. It sure is. A smile on her face and a smile on everyone's face in the arena. Everyone felt very ready to see how that boulder was done and Stasha delivered.
And Helen, though, from one extreme to the other, she takes a deep breath. Looks like she's forcing down emotion there on the mats. Yeah, Helen currently with only 10 points on the board, so a really difficult space to be. Struggling to get established on this. It's... Cool. And, yeah, a lot of emotion from Ariane as well. It's a really tough place to be out there right now. Ariane knows that, or I imagine she knows Laura just did this boulder and did it quickly. She'll have come back to ISO, she'll have heard the crowd. Um, so both athletes really struggling out there. And, you know, this is what they do. They are here to fight for that Olympic ticket. They are going through it all right before our very eyes. So, yeah, it can be difficult to, to see and difficult to witness, but it's, it's sport, it's brutal. It is indeed, and both of them are dealing with it so differently. You can almost feel something rising in Helene, that sort of feeling of panic as the clock ticks down. Oriane is just screaming every time she falls. This is huge now for the competition. Helen falls once more. Oriane is established. She's got left heel in really deep there. Hits the 10, but oh. swings. Oh, big moments. And I don't think she's going to get that 10 either. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, no, she has been awarded it. There we go. So that's the 10 up on the board. Yeah, I think she had it before her foot slipped. Interesting that she's been awarded. I wonder if there'll be any appeals on that. But she did stick it before her foot slipped, so it did seem like it was the right call from the judges. Um, however, it could be appealed, potentially. Uh, we will be waiting to find out. However, she slipped, she fell. She. It's interesting that she wasn't able to kind of keep fighting towards that last um, 25. Uh, it took a, a while to get there, and I think it's going to be frustration for her as she heads back into isolation. But she needs to settle down, refocus, and that is our last look at that boulder. It's true, it's gone, isn't it? Well, goodbye, boulder two. Let's stick with boulder three. Laura is up. This is Zelia Abazu. Good work with the right foot, but can't quite. I think it sticks, sort of balancing, overbalancing over towards the right. Up she goes again. Tries to crimp the edge. Is there a, is there a block or is that purple just uh, mark? I think it's just an indicator where the hold should be. There it is. Yeah, so you see all these little little drawings on the wall. Good spot. That's where the root setters know how to put the holds back <laughs> on after. So they will set these climbs ahead of the competition. Then they'll put them up just before the round, do some little bits of tweaking and looking at kind of what decisions they want to make. They made the boulders for this round harder. Um, they wanted to kind of let the women showcase their best selves. And I think they thought they underestimated the women in the qualification round. So therefore wanted to kind of give them the space to showcase just how capable they are. And I think they've definitely done that. Maybe slightly overcut, slightly more difficult than they were intending. But it is so impossible to know. And Zelia making me proud, doing the <laughs> static way, the first one. She is a girl after my own heart. <laughs> There we go, Zelia. You've made Shauna happy here in the commentary box, but hard moves to come. She's going to go through this step through. Watch the left foot where it lands. There's only a very small surface of texture on the next hold, but oh no, she's reversing. So a bit of a change from Zelia. Oh, but that right foot bobbled twice before she slipped. I definitely was thinking about the foot match there. Do you want to guess Zelia's slab percentage completion this year? No, I do not want to guess. <laughs> I've 80, got no idea. 80%. Seriously, that she is amazing. She has completed 80% of the slab she has tried this year. So, yeah, do not take your eyes off Zelia because. Yeah, I she think could do this, you could couldn't definitely she? Definitely see a top on this. Yeah, but look, she's changed the way she did the first move. So she's actually went for the run and jump that second time. And Laura, haven't chatted too much about her. She's trying to do this first move very statically, leaving the left hand behind at the moment. Often not a fan of the coordination. Um, we talk about lead dominant athletes. She definitely is one. She got 100 points in the lead round. However, she did have a really strong bold around in qualification two. Zelia, meanwhile, sticks the 10. Little foot slip. She needs to kind of calm her nerves here. She definitely looks nervous heading into this last section, but we know she's capable of doing it. All right, well, let's see if she can keep that 80% intact. Brings the right foot up. She's a one shoulder move away here. Needs to stand up. Fingertips on, and then it's all about the left toe to steady herself. This could be a send for Zelia. She's got the toe in. It is going to be good match from Zelia Avazu, and that's big for her on the score as well. And Laura making progress towards that coordination jump, nodding her head, looking confident. But what a performance from Zelia. 
Might be bumping up her percentage even. <laughs> exactly. She's on 82 now. Who knows? <laughs> well, she leaves and Laura will be alone on the mats. It's a position she's used to being in, having made many, many finals over the years in lead and boulder. Uh, look at that stretch. She's so stretched out. She is. She's the only athlete we've seen trying to reach between those two holds. I asked if the resetters thought that athletes would do that. They said they tried and they couldn't make it work. But Laura is making it work for her. Yeah, she did once, but she's struggling now, and she hit her shin there on the way down. And so she's got a minute, and this is where Laura can struggle when she starts to get frustrated. Look at this, though, brings it through this time. We know she's capable of putting out good performances. In 2019, she came eighth in Vail. However, her boulder completion rate this season has been 44%. Um, so we saw her have a really great qualification round. And then in this round, we've seen a bit of mix, but she was nodding her head on the mat, looking like she was really confident, ready to have another good go at this. However, the clock is ticking down and she's decided to leave it. Yeah, she's gone, 26 seconds to go. Laura will leave, have a little moment back there in the ISO, which is just behind the curtain, <laughs> tempting us with a look at the behind the scenes. It's interesting when we talk about lead dominant athletes because yes, there's another chance on lead to gain more points. However, the maximum points they can get is 100. And of course they're against everybody else. There is no guarantee that they can pull back their performances on lead. So it is huge, this bold around for all of the athletes, of course. It is, and look how close the scores are. It's low scoring, but Chloe Collier, 68.7 leaves her in the lead. And as we come down, we see a couple who have perhaps hesitated early on. Helene Ayala, Mia Krampel, still the big surprise on that one. Yeah, there's a few surprises down low, unfortunately. All right, Oriane is on. She's on Boulder 3, and Stasha is finishing off her comp on Boulder 4. You can see her there in the background. Now, Oriane is pretty good at these coordination style moves. So let's see what she can do. And Stasha, well, we know from her commentating, she's a bit of a master at movement. She likes to figure these things out. Yeah, she's she's definitely a, a problem solver, both in kind of what she does out off climbing and on the wall. She's um, a very busy lady, also sits with me on the athlete commission. Look at this from Oriane. We said she might like it. She's straight in and she's one move away from flashing this boulder. But look at the thought process. She wants to press into it. We know it's easier to jump. She goes for the right hand, almost made it work. We didn't see her pogo swing her leg. Um, so she, she knows what to do. You can see her moving her hands around and kind of deciding how to attempt that on her next go. So if her right foot can come further right, so when she hits that top hold, it stops her movement. I think we'll definitely see her stick that for sure. Yeah, so some learning to be done, but a good first attempt from Oriane. That's one last look at the degrees on the wall. So you can see Stash is on the most slabby section at zero degrees, and Oriana's on a slightly overhanging part there at the 10 degrees. She's taking a long time looking. She's, her eyes are locked on the last hold here. So here goes Oriana again. Made this look cruisy the first time, and she does the span. And that little difference in height does help. You can see how stretched out Laura was compared to Oriane then. Yeah, very different setup for both of these athletes. Of course, height plays a favor sometimes and not others. Oriane opting to jump straight to the second, not doing the one, two. Um, and we just get to see another look at this boulder, at this move, final move on this boulder. Very different. Oh, no! Very different, she had her foot up high on the green, which meant her weight was so much higher, so her hips were so much higher than Stash's, for example. So yeah, really different there. So you, what you saw is when she hit that 25, her body continued to move. I talked about that right foot. She managed to hit the right foot, but because she jumped off the green, it <laughs> meant that all her weight was moving too fast for that foot to stop it. But all oh, the crowd want to see it. I apologize about my, oh no, I tried to keep my expletives low, but that really caught me unawares. I thought she was done and <laughs> Dusted. No, that hold, it's good, but it's not that good no. to swing around like that, and that's for sure. Oh, well, Oriane giving us some moments here, but she'll get to go again. Two minutes left, Stasha starts going. She tried the cross through last time, and she's going for it again. Oh, no, she's not, so a little, no, she is going to commit, I think. It's such a precarious position to be in here. 
she had full rubber down on the hole, but the body position was wrong. You can see her start to barn door off. It was, and her hips were not pointing in the right direction, were they, Matt? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ariane again. Let's see if she can get it this time. She goes for this big jump, or she has been. Nice from her. Well, full concentration, please, Oriane. Make this. Oh, she slips again, but this time she holds it. I have a feeling she might have started to celebrate a little too early to go before. She does that sometimes, and I, I just wish she'd match before she'd celebrate, but, you know, she knows when she's in control. Uh -huh. Her right hand was so much more solid that time, which allowed her to swing around on it. Really interesting, Vita, having that high foot on the green. Not something I think the setters even tried or saw, but great work from her. Yeah, so Oriane making progress in the semi-final. Stash has got a minute by herself out there. And she's going for a different method now. This will secure her this second zone if she can move and use it a little bit more, but she, well, we'll I, see. I think she'll get that because she generated movement from it, so she did use it. Um, an important 10 to get, definitely, and bumping her into fourth currently with 59.1 points. Yeah, remember, you don't have to win the semi-final, but you want to be in the top eight, of course, to progress through to the finals. Stasha drops off again, 28 seconds. Now the nerves start to come in as that clock runs down, and she is just rushing a bit here. Interesting that she's continuing to attempt this boulder with the clock ticking down. Yes, boulder is her preferred discipline, but with not much time, she's definitely not point hunting. She's got the 10, she's just looking for a top. <laughs> If we can see a top in seven seconds, I will be amazed. But regardless, it's been a great effort from Stasha. Yeah, she has done no miracles for her, but a good score up and forth as it stands, and she will lead the stage. And while we're chatting about scores, I should just point out to everyone that this is a provisional score. So once the competition finishes and the broadcast ends, any appeals will go through and those scores will be confirmed. So when we leave you, just remember that. So Laura, she'll be by herself on the slab. I can't believe it's almost over. I know, well, it's all right. We have many, many to come. <laughs> so at 2 p.m. we have the men's boulder, and at 7 p.m. we have the lead rounds. And then tomorrow we do it all over again for the finals. And Laura with that run and jump again, a different angle. Might be the camera angle, but she's, yeah, yeah, she is very straight to it. Yeah, and it seemed to work really well for Zelia and Camilla. So I think it's quite a wise choice. I expected to see Laura try and do the static, um, what like Zelia did as well, actually. And a little foot slip there. I wouldn't be surprised if she tries that again. She often likes to, or prefers the static approach. Let's see, so that pumping of the arms as she runs up, really trying to drive that momentum forward. She currently has 34.9 points on the board, so definitely not as high scoring as her qualification round in Boulder. We know she is a lead specialist. We expect to see her very high up on the lead route, getting some points. But of course, all the other athletes are going to be hunting points on that on that lead route too, which is just to the right of us here. It's hard not to look at. It's hard to keep our focus <laughs> on the Boulder, but. It has definitely been an exciting show so far. It has been, and Laura is up into the starting position. So she's got that, uh, let's see. So wraps the hand around it, and it's like a guppy there. And then she starts moving her way across, wants the foot swap, trying to make room for that right foot. Needs to jump the left out of the way if she's gonna do that, but I think she's gonna reset on it. Oh, here it goes, no. And Shauna, you said there's a lip there, but it's a very, super small to hit. A very faint lip, um, and it is entirely untextured, what you're standing on. It looks like you might be just on the texture, but you're, you're not. You're definitely on the no texture. You can see she's crossing through now to the no texture jib on the second purple. Um, so the middle one there, and the fact that they moved that purple jib closer to the wall made that cross through, and just the, the slab less. Um, slabby, so it's a lot harder than it was originally. All right, well, that's the theory behind it. And Laura, so interesting. She's tried almost everything on this. Now she's crimping the edge between the volume and the wall. Oh, that is savage for anyone who doesn't know what she's doing there. There is so little there that she is holding on to. 
that. And this is just so she can get established on the boulder. Yeah, millimetres. That's all there is. But Lara loves moves like that. It's interesting how she used her skill set well. But it's the feet that she struggled with before. Now goes for the cross. There it is. Great shot to see. Now you can really see how there's very little room for error here. Tried to snatch into the 10. I don't think she's going to be awarded that. She was always falling, not using it. Minute 30, and again, the atmosphere in the stadium has changed here. Everyone's attention focused on this slab. She's going to go for it again. I, just, I can imagine the lines left on her fingers from that crimp. You say crimp, there's an all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you call it. From a... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a word for it either. <laughs> no, let us know. What should we call that hold? Or whatever, she's making it work. All that pressure on the right foot as she stands up. Yeah, the right foot is really good here, but I mean, that's all she's got, just the right foot pretty much. So she taps into the start. She has to have four points on the green tapes and then she reaches up to the five. Her right hand is wrapped now. I wonder if we'll see her try a foot swap. We don't, I don't think she's gonna step through again. We know that this works for the shorter climbers if they can find this balance position at the end, but it is very tricky to find. She wants to flick her hips around, step across, and what happened there is her hips were in a great position, but her shoulders leant back, so then she wasn't able to save it. So not only do her hips need to be right and close into the wall, her shoulders do too. <laughs> sure, There's a lot going I've on. I've only just got my head around the hips thing. You can't yeah, introduce a whole other body part. Just yet. <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. Exactly. All right, well, Laura leaves the stage, and a little a little bit of a head hang there, but she has done okay. She's going to have to have a good lead round. Let's check the scores, shall we? Well, Chloe Collier, 68.7. Zili Abazu, Stachigeo, Oriane Berton. She's got one bowler to go. Camilla Moroni, Lucia Dorfel, Jenya Kazbakova, and Petra Klingler in the top eight. Hannah Moyle just outside, but in touch, as is Laura still. But as we go down, these athletes have a lot of work to do in the lead round coming up later on, especially Mia Krampel and Mattia Poxy leading, leading out us off in 20th position. Right, slab time for Oriam. She lives sometimes in Fontainebleau, which is a very famous forest nearby with lots of slabs. So let's see if that has uh, rubbed off on her indoor climbing. And she's having a long look, trying to read this sequence. Shauna, how much can you gain? Because obviously these athletes are on the mats and the other athletes are climbing on a boulder. Do you get any tips and ideas of how to climb it from other people or, or yeah, is that just not your focus? In, oh, Ariane just making a mistake there. She saw the five as the start hold and jumped uh. up to both holds. A different start, kind of opting to kind of pounce onto the wall. Um, yeah. An unusual error for Ariane to make, but sorry, back to your question. Um, we aren't allowed to watch the other athletes, but of course, if you're stood looking at the wall, you can turn and look at the clocks, which are at either side of the wall. If you've got good peripheral vision, you can get a lot from what's going on. And yeah, I definitely did gain a lot from, if I was looking straight ahead, I could see to either side of me, you know. Um, it's made as fair as possible, but it's, it's impossible not to know what's happening either side of no. you, right? And of course, um, it doesn't necessarily help. When we, Oriane would have seen people on this, she's still struggling with it. It's very different when you try the boulder yourself. It, for sure, it doesn't necessarily help. Sometimes it can hinder as well. Um, and it depends how you use that information. Do you, do you see someone falling and think, oh, I won't try that, or I will try that? Do you see someone doing it? And again, you have to process that information. And that's all whilst you're focused on the boulder that's in front of you. Um, so there are some advantages to not doing a boulder you get more time on the mat but of course that's different for the climbers who come out first and early on and it also depends on who you're climbing with and how fast they climb so there's a lot of different elements to play with and that's where experience I think you you see athletes experience and how they use their time on the mat wisely but it's definitely try tries to be as fair as possible but of course it's a different experience for every athlete that goes out because the conditions change slightly, who they're around, how the crowd react changes. Um, yeah, this is 
a surprise, I would say, from Ariane on uh, her vert percentage completion this year. So vertical climbs is 100%, so Oof. it is her dominant style. And slabs is 75, so I'm not sure what we'd class this as, of slab or vert. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, she was second at the Bern World Championships this year. Her average boulder completion rate this year has been 63%. She's made four out of five finals, um, four out of five semi-finals as well. She won a World Cup this year in Prague. You know, this, this lady, this woman has a lot of pressure on her shoulders coming into this event. So hopefully we can see her really use that to her advantage. And here we see her kind of finding her flow again right now. Yeah, she did well, worked out that sequence. And with a minute 50 to go, Oriana's put herself in a good position to finish off this boulder now. Can she end on a high? Needs to stand up on that right foot, hit it with the shoulders. She's one in, needs the toe hook. She will make the match, and that is the perfect end to Oriane's boulder competition. <laughs> and a big celebration from her. Big celebration, the crowd are on their feet. They are going absolutely wild. At only 18 years old, she is absolutely smashing it. So really cool to see. They're jumping up the leaderboard, the only athlete to have points in the 80s, with no athletes with points in the 70s even. So yeah, a dominant lead for her coming into the lead route later on. Yeah, well, let's have a look at this. We see, as Shauna said, Oriane jumped up to the top, 84.2. Chloe Collier, Zilia Abazu, Stasha Geo, Camilla Maroni, Lucia Dorfel. Jenya Kazbekova and Petra Klingler make up our top eight. Remember, the 100 lead score gets added to that. As we go down, Hannah Moyle easily in touch with the 44, and then into the 30s, Sarah Chopper in 11th. Vita Lucan down in 13th, perhaps a few injury niggles there, but she did well. Erin Manise, GB, being represented down in 16th. Mattia Pozzi in 20th definitely has some work to do. Well, we're almost going to say goodbye to you soon, and just to remind you of the schedule, at 2 p.m. Central European time, we will come back for the boulder round for the men and then 7 p.m. the lead rounds. Shauna, thank you so much for joining me. We're going to say goodbye and we'll see you this afternoon for more IFSC Climbing Action. See you soon.